Sunday, the 14th of March. Thank you for uh, deciding to uh, spend some time with I. I've uh, got a presentation for you, like. A special one. Special for many ways. In many ways. Special for many reasons. Um, shout going out to the mums. Why? Why would there be there? Why? Hmm. A shout going out to the mums. What for? Love art going out to the mums. Obviously, dads are equal too, but this day in Britain, on this day, we celebrate many things. One of them might be the Omegas, Mother's, Mother's Day. So if you are a female, we give you love and respect. If you are a female with siblings, offspring, blood, um young ones assets etc princesses and princes is the one that i like to go for Shh. focus what Shh. focus the lion you can't see it ruined wasted on this let's get on with it it's going to be a while if you're not in the frame of mind to take a lot of data complex and uh not because it's it's above you but if you're not in the right frame of mind and your head's not in the game then um, i'd consider turning off and coming back another time and um, when it's beneficial to you um if your head is in the game or you've got a bit of time and you'd like to uh, take a trip across the eons so to speak and namely to 1930s america um <laughs> it's brilliant it's absolutely amazing what i found uh, in the archives uh, moving the terabytes across you know how you do uh, looking what you've got uh fattening up the uh resource um library literature library resource vault that we have um and doing some uh, upcoming posts um incredible what i found i found a lot of interesting documents i didn't know i had what I must say is, I have no idea who this author is, where it came from, if it was downloaded, if it was emailed to me. I know nothing, but uh, I believe some of you may have heard snippets of this, seen bits around and about. So uh, um, um, Vatican souls owning uh, off the back of that. You know, I've um, got homage and love and respect for Brother Santos of the Bonacci fam, clan, tribe, estate. And um, this is in no way uh, belittling an attack, besmirching or anything like that. This is just uh, this is just on the back of an evolution, a renaissance, as we say there. So um, it is important that we that we know certain things and um, it is important that we move on and we continue to do the groundbreaking work and um, and, uh, you know, continue to discuss and debate and how we see things how we view things, uh, what's been said before, the technology, the connectivity, the groups, the chats, the, uh, the the renaissance of the Bible and the understanding, the scriptures, literature. So without further ado, we'll say love and respect to all that have been mentioned. Thank you for joining scribes, initiates and everyone else. I will stop waffling. Welcome. Thank you. Once again, mums, we love you. Well done. Super smashing. Great. For mummers. Um, quickly doing admin. I'm about tomorrow caught up with 95% of emails across all accounts. Very happy to see the comments, the activity, the controversy all over the domains, Facebook, YouTube, and SPL's private. And thank you for the feedback, the comments, the love, the praise, the uh, the, clear, the clarity that's come in, the clear cognizance. So respect, thank you all, um, you know, your local, uh, your local brother, um, a blue man group, especially uh, to that last comment there by uh, Roger. Um, could you watch the room, please? Because I'm not going to be able to uh, admin and facilitate. So we'll go from the top. Jesus, thank you for your sarcasm. You got somewhere else you'd rather be? Please go away. <laughs> Gansders, much love, brother. Nice icons. Nice icons. Jerry, G-Man, a.k.a. Eric. How do's? Respect, brother. Roger Donald's retracted his message, uh, deleted by Lindsay Ann. Thank you, Sister Lindsay, Sister uh, Mamas, Famalan, Blue Man Group. So please, yes, uh, look after the room there, the chat. I will review it at a later date. Um, time is very short. 
Um, JJ's waiting for his bus. Uh, I'm not paid. I'm not obligated. I'm, I'm rather late. I fell asleep last night about nine bells. I'm going to continue it on now just for JJ. <laughs> and um, I woke up about one bells a.m. And I was like, OK, missed that. Uh, first cast for this last night. Um, tonight, later, Kevin and I will be showing you some more, I don't know, adventures. So let's go. Come on, JJ, stick your hand out. Bus has arrived. Come on. What number is it? Number triple one three has just pulled up. Eleven eleven. No triple one three. Um, if you haven't said hello to your mum and that you love them, please go away and do that now, as of uh, Sunday the fourteenth of March. If you have, well done. And if you're on the replay, don't matter. Rewind bowl selector. So this work has been found in my archives. SPLS Pro is not the author. This is a proofread, so I can go through the uh, 95 pages and 41,000 words. It is a document written by an American in about the 1930s America, as you will hear and see through the course of this reading. There are no sources links available. If you do believe ye are the author or may know of the author or be able to give me a title for this or that you have any rights connected to this uh, reading, I do believe it's out of copyright after 1930s anyway, but out of love, respect and whatnot, you know, you can email contact at splspro.com and I will attribute the uh, penmanship, authorship details to this. All right. It's a fantastic journey and it's, uh, it's something that needs to be said, bearing in mind what you've seen from Glosser, Bromley, uh, Santos, Jordan, and many, many others, which I won't name now. Let's go. The bus is setting off. The wheels are turning. Are we all comfortable? It's going to be a big one. So this information references uh, the New World Roman Holy Testament. And it is also to be cross-referenced with other historical artifacts and notices from historical antiquity, such as this one I'm about to read out. It's non-exhaustive and not limited to um including and in no particular order the dead sea scrolls and i've got a nice paragraph there about them but we'll move on the aleppo codex that is something that uh, you might want to be looking at in syria and around syria and the bombing of syria recently the aleppo codex uh, is found from there the enuma elish one of my favorites of all time ever um, Babylonian, you know, uh, Mesopotamian, things like that. Uh, I'll leave it there. Brilliant. The epic battle of Gilgamesh. Who is he? What was he? Um, the man with the beard, the hat, the pine cone. Not one of the men. And the bag. They come with a bag, a pineal type cone, and they wear a watch. And they're from the Middle East. Again, an area which has been heavily bombed, raided, uh, etc. But those two go hand in hand. Enuma Elish and the Epic Battle of Gilgamesh. <laughs> the Book of Enoch. Oh, yes. The Book of Enoch. We'll just carry on. The Gospel of Thomas. That's an important one for me, the Gospel of Thomas. Such things as seek and ye shall find. Um, uh, doubting Thomas and etc. Doubt keeps you alive. Fear is healthy um, in, in an amount because it will keep you alive. You know, it's not a negative thing, fear, but it needs to be managed and controlled mentalized correctly the two ra or torah again middle eastern origin it's the first five books um, of the hebrew bible basically the torah excellent epic incredible um, i'm not going to go through the bce and etc and whatnot and uh, but there's a big paragraph here for you um the first five books of the bible though genesis said uh, the first book of moses exodus leviticus numbers and deuteronomy um penta penta what do we call it now penta tech or something from a greek word meaning uh fivefold um the talmud we're just going to skip straight past that because uh that just needs mentioning but those that know of the talmud you know um spelt humor wrong We'll come back to that. We'll uh, reloop the Corpus Hermetica. Now that one, that is that's the ba that is the bad boy. That is the babby. That's your badger. The money's in that one. The Corpus Hermetica. Why? Um, you'll find out. Uh, you've got Isis, Osiris, 
and you've got Horus, but then you've got uh, Hermes Trismegistus, and then you might have Thoth underneath. So, um, uh, whew, yeah, it's, uh, it's brilliant what we've looped together and what we've researched, all right? The Kabalion, or the Kybalion. The Kabalion, um, what that basically the principle embodies there is, is incredible. Um, the lament of Hermes and the hymns of Hermes, again, linked with Corpus Hermeticum, Corpus Hermetica, um, Madame Blavatsky, Helen, Helena, Helen Blavatsky. Um, has also worked with the uh, many minds of uh, 1800s. Uh, I've got lots of names I could drop in, but we'll keep it simple and move on. Hindu, Indian philosophy, its ethics and its theology. The Maharabhata. All right. Uh, uh, I'll leave it there. The Bhagavata or the Bhagavata. Um, ingredient, ingredients for Indian philosophy. Um, the Holy Rig Vedas. Oh, yes. Again, brilliant. Uh, and last but not least, comprising in the title of Books of the Ethiopian Bible or Bibliotech. All right. You've got a lot of books there, more so than in the New Testament and in the Old Testament written in Hebraic Phoenician Hebraic text there. All right. And that's got a big old list here of, um, of such things as. And the Ethiopian monastery, the world's earliest illustrated Christian book, has been saved by a British charity, which located it at a remote Ethiopian monastery, would you know? Ethiopian monastery. Mm, exactly. Fantastic. So we're on. We're starting. 11 minutes in. We've not done bad to do introductions. Get warm and get ready for it. Again, if you're not in the headspace for a lot of data, um, we're not here to uh, aggravate, vexate or challenge you or belittle you. This is um, a product of uh, findings of my archives. And then um, I've put that top bit on to this document. We are not going to change the original body of words. going to leave them pure, whole, unsullied, so to speak, in their original form as I was given them some years ago. Um, and uh, I want you to be in the right headspace for this. I want you to have fun. I want you to feel warm and fuzzy. I want you to have a laugh. I want you to give me your comments and input and then um, reflect on it. And once you've let it settle in and reflect, not now, at the end of this, because I'm going to run away and eat, relax, and then come back with big dog Kevin, Tesla King, our Kelvin, uh, shortly. So it starts now. This is the actual document. Um, it's entitled Consciousness is the Only Reality. There are five sections to this, of which I'm on page 10 of 96. And you got 41,000 words. Blue Man's Group, respect you. I'll look after you if you look after me. Just like that lion picture with the lady at the back there. I've got your back if you've got mine. So um, the haters, hello, we love you. The trills, the shills, the sarcastic ones, the ones that are here to leech. Hello, we love you. Big love. All right, no hate, no anger um, in each other's images. So uh, please protect and... Um, Thank you already to Lindsay for doing that. If you can't make it all the way, I understand. And I won't be offended if you say ciao for now. See you in a bit. This is a journey. This is a journey unlike any journey. I've reread this as I've uh, formatted it again because it was in a ragtaggy, scraggy condition. And when I reread it, I went tingly and uh, electrified many times. And it's my duty to read this to you. So you may want to take this video in small sections. <laughs> Uh, all right, so um, let's go. Consciousness is the only reality. This is going to be spoken about very practically. Therefore, I hope everybody in this uh, video presentation, in this document, has a very clear picture of what they desire. For I am convinced that you can realize your desires by the technique you will receive here in this publication. I'm reading it as the author's written it. Not, don't have a go at me for anything as of this point, all right? Um, Rebel without a pause is upon you. I may read it fast, all right? But that's because I'm time conscious. So it is so that you may receive the full benefit of these instructions as beneficiaries of this uh, trust we have here. Let me state now that the Bible has no reference at all to any persons who have ever existed or to any event that, that have ever occurred upon the earth. I'm sorry. All right. We'll come back to this later with love and respect and the world's greatest story. 
all right the ancient storytellers were not writing history but an allegorical picture lesson of certain basic principles which they clothed in the garb of history and they adapted these stories to the limited capacity of a most uncritical and credulous peoples throughout the centuries we have mistakenly taken personifications for persons a literalist santos and jordan have pointed out that the bible is generally a great piece of work and a story and a study and when you go through the stories they generally have about seven um generally not always uh, sometimes less uh, different interpretations they have lay layers and depths and you are to not take it literally sometimes so that's what the author is saying there you some of this you'll hear you'll know you'll agree with some you won't we've talked about a lot of this before and you will hear where some of my prepositions have come from and ideas and influences as i've been uh, doing this study and due diligence throughout the centuries uh, the vehicle that conveyed the instruction for the in the vehicle that conveyed the instruction for the instruction and the gross first sense for the ultimate sense intended the difference between the form of the bible and its substance is as great as the difference between a grain of corn and the life germ within that grain as our assimilative organs discriminate between food that can be built into our system and food that must be discarded so do our awakened intuitive faculties discover beneath allegory and parable the psychological life germ of the bible the seed of life the flower of life life germ all right and feeding on this we too cast off the form which conveyed the message the argument against the historic the historicity some of this is american english so please bear with the argument against his, the history of the bible is too lengthy consequently it is not suitable for inclusion in this practical psychological interpretation of its stories contained within therefore we shall waste no time in trying to convince that the bible is not an accurate historical fact when i say the bible i believe the author because he's not specified he's just put the bible what bible what god we'll say the new roman new world testament um canonized uh, council of hippo third century just before the fourth 400 bc remember when jc was allegedly um, crucified at 33 the canonization of the bible and uh, the romans the empires constantine who we mistakenly thought was solely responsible um etc dan brown ain't got it on us so just bear that in mind with love and respect all right no offense is uh, is meant there this uh, readings is uh, going to take four short stories and will show you what the ancient storytellers intended that you and I should see in these stories. The ancient teachers attach psychological truths to phallic and solar allegories. They did not know as much of the physical structure of man as do modern scientists. Neither did they know as much about the heavens as do our modern astronomers the little they did know they used wisely and they built phallic and solar frames to which they tied the great psychological truths that they had discovered london obelisk washington dc obelisk um, outside um, the monument for um, abraham lincoln you see it in a film a lot of the time yeah with that rectangle section body of water the oval office and then the vatican no um, St. Peter's Square, is it? Um, uh, they have an obelisk, which weighs so many feet, and uh, they're all dragged from Egypt and put across these foreign lands. Phallic, okay, penal, penal code, phallic, pubic, public. Yeah, you get me. In the Old Testament, you will find much of the phallic worship. Uh, as it is not helpful, we're not going to emphasise it. The author, this document, I, by proxy of, will only show you how to possibly interpret it. Before we come to the first of the psychological dramas that you and I may use in a practical sense, let us state that the two outstanding names of the Bible, the one you and I translate as God or Jehovah, and the one we call his son, which we have as Jesus. Uh, the ancients spelled these names by using little symbols. The ancient tongue called the Hebraic language was not a tongue that you exploded with the breath. It's going to, it's going to, be like a ventriloquist then. Try and do it without moving your mouth like, okay, no, 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 no
maybe something like that. I don't know. It was a mystical language, never uttered by man. Those who understood it, understood it as mathematicians understand symbols of higher mathematics. <sighs> Spikiness. <laughs> There's now you're talking. Um, it is not something people used to convey thought, as I now use the English language to talk to you in, yes? Let's not forget that. They say that God's name was spelled Jod, He, Vau, He. J-O-D, space, H-E, space, V-A-U, space, H-E, all caps. I shall take these symbols and in our normal down-to-earth language explain them in this manner. The first letter, and I know J-O-D, Jod, is not a letter, but the author has written the first letter, Jod, so that must be the symbol of Jod, which the symbol would signify the letter. So remember, you're trying to think now um, about modern linguistics when it isn't, and it isn't Western, and it's from the Middle East. And uh, so the first letter, Jod, in the name God, is a hand or a seed. Not just a hand, but the hand of the director. If there is one pagan organ sorry if there is one organ of man that discriminates and sets him apart from the entire world of creation it could be his hand what we call a hand in the anthropoid ape is not a hand it is used only for the purpose of conveying food to the mouth or to swing from branch to branch man's hand fashions it molds you cannot really express yourself without the hand this is the builder's hand the hand of the director it directs it moulds, it builds within your world under the temple. The ancient storytellers called the first letter Jod, J-O-D, three letters, the hand or the absolute seed out of which the whole of creation will come. I forgot to mention the Egyptians and Ra and Isis and Osiris and Arkhanat and Aten and whatnot, but uh, just so I can put that in at the beginning now, um, the whole of the creation will come. To the second letter, H-E, he, they gave the symbol of a window. A window is an eye. The window is to the house, what the eye is to the body. The third letter, vow, V-A-U, they called a nail. A nail is used for the purpose of binding things together, the conjunction. And in the Hebraic tongue, it is simply the third letter or vow. If you want to say man and woman i put the vow in the middle it binds them together the fourth and the last letter he is another window or i in this modern down-to-earth language of ours you can forget eyes and windows and hands and look at it in this manner you are seated here now the first letter jod is i is your i amness your awareness i think therefore i am you are aware of being aware or maybe you're not Maybe you're just coming out of a dream and uh, actually for the first times, some of you very sharp and have been aware a long time. We call it conscionable in uh, trust uh, uh, talk, uh, trust law. Um, you're aware of being aware. That is the first letter. Out of this awareness, all states of awareness come. The second letter, he, called an I, is your imagination, your ability to perceive. You imagine or perceive something which seems to be other than self as though you were lost in revere and contemplated mental states in a detached manner making the thinker and his thoughts separate uh, separate entities the third letter vow v-a-u is your ability to feel you are that which you desire to be as you feel you are it you become aware of being it to walk as though you were what you want to be is to take your desire out of the imaginary world and put the vow on it. Now think of the nun in the beginning, um, the Egyptian uh, historic, art, I don't know, uh, architectural and archaeological reference in there. Um, Apep, Atum, okay, that's why that bit there makes me think of that. Um, I think therefore I am. You have completed the drama of creation. I am aware of something, then I become aware of actually being that of which I was aware, sovereign. What? I know, I've heard of you sovereigns. What are you about? What do you mean sovereign? Uh, it's just the queen, isn't it? So um, the thought potentiality consciousness, the halls of Amente, 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 downloading uh, Edgar Casey. 
In the fourth and the last letter, in the name of God, is an is another he, H E capitalized, another I, meaning the visible objective world which constantly bears witness of that which I am conscious of being. You do nothing about the objective world. It always moulds itself in harmony with that which you are conscious of being. So inwardly project, outwardly attract. Um, as above, so below, so below, as above. Uh, Toth and Hermes Trismegistus teachings now. That's why I referenced the Corpus Hermetica way back up at the beginning when I was giving you the listings of the Croft referencing. We haven't just found some videos, copied the words down and thought we'd make a video. No, no, no. So all of this objectification and cross-referencing is um, is like what Pazio brings to you, is like what uh, Santos has brought you, is like what uh, Greg Braden has brought you, is what uh, Bruce Lipton Ice T has brought to you. The divine particle conscious quantum matrix, quantum maths, quantum language, quantum science. All right. So uh, stop making me spiky. You are told this is the name by which all things are made. And without it, there is nothing made that is made. The name is simply what you can, you the, what you have now as you are seated here. You are conscious of being, aren't you? Certainly you are. You are also conscious of something that is other than yourself. The room, the furniture, the people, the background, waiting for the bus. You may become selective now. Maybe you do not want to be other than what you are. Or to own what you see but you have the capacity to feel what it would be like were you now other than what you are as you assume that you are that which you want to be you have completed the name god or the jod he vow he news to me jod capital space he capital space vau capital space he all in capitals dot the final result of the objectification of your assumption is not your concern. It will also come into view automatically as you assume the consciousness of being it. Now let us turn, see the soul, the spirit. Um, let us turn, before we turn, um, inside you think, therefore you am. You've got the biological estate, the body, which houses everything. You would have the spirit and a soul, uh, generally speaking. So there are three inside the one housed all right so souls spirits consciousness awareness um you know proclamations uh, evidence of life essence incarnation that we're getting um you know excellent feedback with and uh, it's it's working well with what we put together to move everyone to the private officially lawfully legally internationally uh, uh, biblically abrahamically mosaically all of it so um now let us turn to the son's name for he gives the son, S-O-N, the, the author's written this, S-O-N, um, dominion over the world. We put S-U-N because of the son and the Egyptian connection. But S-O-N, um, I will put slashes and sons in the references underneath. You possibly are that son. Remember when I said Depeche Mode, what we're going to do is take away your own personal Jesus. Someone to hear your prayers. Someone who's there. We're going to take that personal Jesus out and we're going to put you, the reflection, in. Because all of this and on the knees and crying and begging and whatnot isn't quite the way that the body would command the universe to come to the attention and uh, and order um, angels, etc. So we are going to look at the word, the sun. Um, you are that sun. Uh, you are the great Joshua or Jesus of the Bible. You, um, Allah, etc. You know, uh, I keep to the thread. You know the name Joshua or Jehoshua. We have anglicised as Jesus. Anglicised, made into English speak. Legalised, anglicised, legalised, uh, Catholicised, Christianised, um, bastardised. The son's name is almost like the father's name. The first three letters of the father's name are in the first three letters of the son's name. So we've got Jod. And then all together, H-E-V-A-U, Jod Hevau. Then you add a Shin, S-H-I-N, and A-Y-N, -A A-Y-I-N, making the son's name read Jod, Hevu, Shin, A-Y-N. You have heard what the first three are, Jod Hevau. Jod means that you are aware, 
he means that you are of something and Val means that you became aware of being that of which you were aware <laughs> being reborn I hear what you're saying you have dominion because you have the ability to conceive and to become that which you conceive that is the power of creation why a shin put in the name of the son I'm glad you asked because of the infinite mercy of our father mind you the father and the son are but one but when the father becomes conscious of being man he puts within the condition called man that which he did not give him to himself he puts shin for this purpose a shin is symbolized as a tooth as a fake tooth a tooth is that which consumes that which devours I must have within me the power to consume that which I now dislike. I, in my ignorance, brought to the birth certain things I now dislike and would like to leave it behind me. Were <laughs> This isn't written by me, so you must understand. When I haven't written things, and it's, uh, it's basically foreign to me, I do struggle with um, the flow of the punctuation and the grammar and the breath. I would like to leave behind me. Were there not within me the flames that would consume it, I would be condemned forever to live in a world of all my mistakes. But, alas, there is a shin, or flame, within the name of the sun, which allows that sun to become detached from states he formerly expressed within the world. Man is incapable of seeing other than the contents of his own consciousness. If I now become detached in consciousness from this room by turning my attention away from it, you know, meditations, then I am no longer conscious of it. There is something in me that devours it within me. It can only live within my objective world if I keep it alive within my consciousness. The West asked the East, Ah, oh, you meditate. What do you meditate on? You know, because normally you, you can be pondering and meditating on, I can meditate on a on a possible lawful remedy for a legal situation for one of the, uh, you know, the uh, private self uh, initiates. Or you can meditate in the East um, with a blank consciousness of nothing and then go on a inward discovery. So there's two kind of forms of meditation there and meditation, transcendental meditation, um, a lot. So just bear that in mind with consciousness and the depths of it. It's a little bit like inception, as many of you know. It is the shin or tooth in the son's name that gives him absolute dominion. Why could it have not been in the father's name? For this simple reason. Nothing can cease to be in the father. Even the unlovely things cannot cease to be unlovely. <laughs> if I once give it expression, forever and ever it remains locked within the dimensionally greater self, which is the father. But I would not like to keep alive within my world all of my mistakes. So I, in my infinite mercy, gave to myself when I became man the power to become detached from these things that I, in my ignorance, brought to birth in my world. These are the two names which give you dominion. You have dominion if, as you walk the earth, you know that your consciousness is God, the one and only reality. You become aware of something you would like to express or possess. You have the ability to feel that you are and possess that which but a moment before was imaginary. The final result, the embodying of your assumption is completely outside of the offices of a three dimensional mind. It comes to birth in a way that no man knows. If these two names are clear in your mind's eye, you will see that they are your eternal names. As you sit here listening to this reciting, uh, exciting recitings, um, you are this Jod Hevu He. You are the Jod Hevu Shin Ayin. The stories of the Bible concern themselves exclusively with the power of imagination. They are really dramatizations, or they seem to be. The world's greatest story seems to be dramatizations of the technique of prayer. For prayer is the secret of changing the future. The Bible reveals the key by which man enters a dimensionally larger world for the purpose of changing the conditions of the lesser world in which he lives. Shout going out to the 23 in the house and the 11 thumbs up. A prayer granted implies that something is done in consequence of the prayer, which otherwise would not have been done. Miracles. Therefore, man is the spring of action with the directing mind 
and the one who grants the prayer. The universal action that happens there. The stories of the Bible contain powerful challenge to the thinking capacity of man. The underlying truth that they are psychological dramas and not historical facts demands reiteration. So um, we've had supposition and we've had literalism. That's what we're here to uh, give you reiteration on. In as much, all as one word there, David, in as much one word as it is the only justification for the stories. With a little imagination, we may easily trace the psychological sense in all the stories of the Bible. With a little, little imagination. OK, I'll leave that there. And God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle and over all the earth. And over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him. Genesis 1 and then 26 to 27. He, in the first chapter of the Bible, the ancient te here in the first chapters of the Bible, the ancient teachers laid the foundation that God and man are one and that man has dominion over all earth. If God and man are one, then God can never be so far off as to even be near, for nearness implies separation. The question arises, what is God? God is man's consciousness, his awareness, his I amness. The drama of life is a psychological one in which we bring circumstances to pass by our attitudes rather than our acts. The cornerstone on which all things are based is man's concept of himself. He acts as he does and has the experiences that he does because of his concept of himself. It is what it is. And for no other reason, he had different concepts of himself. He would act differently and have different experiences. Man, by assuming the feeling of his wish fulfilled, alters his future in harmony with his assumption. For assumptions, through fo though false, if sustained, will harden into fact. A bit like a lie. A lie told, you know, uh, a hundred times remains a lie. A lie told uh, a hundred million times on some media networks turns into facts we're all experts now aren't we on uh, on certain things after you know looking on a few certain domains there so you have to be careful with that if you don't know and you haven't heard of the story of the lie and the truth going for a swim paraphrasing they go for a skinny dip the lie gets out first puts on the clothing of the truth walks around town everyone says hey up truth's looking a bit jazzy isn't it look at truth and uh it's the lie dressed up as truth. The truth gets out of the water. There's only the lies clothes to put on. And the truth walks around in the lies clothing. Everybody shuns truth. Ugh, at you. <laughs> you know, so you think about that and let that sink in. All right, we have some due diligence coming into play. Page 15 of 96. The undisciplined mind finds it difficult to assume a state which is denied by the senses. The ancient teachers discovered that sleep, or a state akin to sleep aided man in making his assumption. Therefore, they dramatized the first creative act of man as one in which man was in a profound sleep. Woke. Are you woke? This, is, this not only sets the pattern for all future creative acts, but shows us that man has but only one substance that is truly his to use in creating his will manifestation, um, and that is himself. And the Lord God, man, brackets, caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And then he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman. Genesis 2, 21 to 22. Before God fashions this woman for man, he brings unto Adam the beasts of the field and the fowls of the air and uh, has Adam named them. Whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. If you will uh, take accordance with a, if you will take accordance or a Bible dictionary and look up the word thigh, T H I G H, as used in this story, you will see that it has nothing to do with the common, you know, word thigh. It is defined as the soft parts that are creative in a man. 
that hang upon the thigh of a man. So T and then high, thigh. Um, interesting. The ancient storytellers used this phallic frame to reveal a great psychological truth. Now then, an angel is considered a messenger of God. You are God, as you have just discovered, for your consciousness is God. And you have an idea, a message. You are wrestling with an idea. For you do not know that you are already in that which you contemplate. Neither do you believe you could become it. Reminds me of me in some parts there. Not that I'm trying to get biblical, um, because that's what we're trying to step away from and get real. But message, sage, mess ages of the ages, the mess age. Um, you would like to, but you do not believe you could. Who wrestles with the angel? Jacob. And the word Jacob, by definition, means the supplanter. You would like to transform yourself and become that which reason and your senses deny. As you wrestle with your ideal, trying to feel that you are it, this is what happens. When you actually feel that you are it, something goes out of you. You may use the words, who has touched me, for I perceive virtue has gone out of me. You become for a moment, after a successful meditation, incapable of continuing in the act. As though it was a physical creative act. You are just as impotent after you have prayed successfully as you are after the physical creative act. When satisfaction is yours, you no longer hunger for it. If the hunger persists, you do not explode the idea within you. You did not actually succeed in becoming conscious of being that which you wanted to be. There, see what I mean about an incredible find. And I'm only nine, 16 pages in of 96. So we have another 80 glorious pages to go. Um, there was still that thirst when you came out of the deep. If I can feel that I am that which, but a few seconds ago, I knew I was not, but desired to be, then I am no longer hungry to be it. I am no longer thirsty because I feel satisfied in that state. Segway for a drink. Then something shrinks within me. Not physically, <laughs> ladies, shush, but in my feeling, in my consciousness. Is it a cold day? I don't know, gentlemen, brothers, initiates. For that is the creativeness of man. He so shrinks in desire. He loses the desire to continue in this meditation. He doesn't. He does not halt physically. He simply has no desire to continue the meditative act. When you pray, believe that you have received, and ye shall receive. When the physical act is, uh, that's why the Gospel of Thomas is so important because there's lots of uh, beauties in there. Um, when the physical creative act is compelled. The sinew which is upon the hollow of man's thigh shrinks and man finds himself impotent or is halted in in like manner. When a man prays successfully, he believes that he is already that which he desired to be. Now, if you've watched the video, God, so need to get through this and I haven't much time and it's already 10 to 6 GMT. But I'm going to say it. Um, cancer cured in three minutes. Greg Braden. Hospital in Beijing is what he proclaims on his Italiano um, talk that I watched a few hours long of 20, early 20s, 2010s, 2014-ish. And he shows a, he shows a, a lady that a lad, uh, allegedly in a womb has a, um, a large um, lump and um, they use the ultrasound like what you look at the uh, gestation of a baby for. And they see an, uh, a large lump, which is allegedly a cancer tumour in her womb. Give me a thumbs up, a fist bump and hearts if you've seen this. And then um, they screenshot that and then they put the screen into two, shift that there. Then they go live here again, the three inch lumps there. And as they are doing their, um, their um, I don't want to, you know, what they're doing there, universal healing, because I don't want to argue and get into it and give labels to it. They, they uh, use their consciousness and their energies and they, they perform without medicine a ritual um, it's not a cult, but it is some kind of ritual, I'd say, um, on this lady. She's there three minutes. All right. And you see on the ultrasound, this lump just just disintegrate and, and, and shrink and go. And um, what's happening here is allegedly Greg Braden, um, the, the cancer's gone in three minutes. And then when they finished, Greg explains that the three men 
that are there in um, Beijing, China. That's the uh, continent where it's from. Um, uh, you'd say what feng shui it's not feng shui <laughs> it's definitely not feng shui all right but um the techniques that they're using there they said that they they approach the lady as if she's already and they see her in the future as if she's already healed with no cancer and on the video when you hear them going oosa, 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 and they're using the body's internal energies to project from them project into this lady they already know she's cured and she has no cancer all right the body is cured she has no cancer the body is cured she has no cancer with intent over and over again pushing the energies down into um you know reiki type is reiki energy for those that may be arguing on the screen there and um that's uh that's incredible to hear um years ago you know and i didn't necessarily believe it at the time i accepted it i thought hmm we need to look at that which we have done so you just think about that, all right? I needed to put that in. You know, he believes that he is already that which he desired to be. Therefore, he cannot continue desiring to be that which he is already conscious of being. At the moment of satisfaction, physical and psychological, something goes out which in time bears witness to man's creative power. I just want to check something. Let's see why the chat's not going by. Something I don't want to sit here and chat to me, Sen. If uh, it's not working, thank you all. I see a lot of chirp. <laughs> While we're here, though, just let me take an intermission. You need an intervention, I need an intermission. Our next story is in the 38th chapter of the book of Genesis. Here is a king whose name is Judah. The first three letters of whose name also begins J-O-D. And then Haval. Tamar, T-A-M-A-R, is his daughter-in-law. The word Tamar means palm tree or the most beautiful. And I find that quite funny. It means palm tree or most beautiful. At one point, I used to say to uh, Anne-Marie in the early days, my little flower of the desert. And she loved it until she worked, until I told her it was a cactus. So again, here, <laughs> you're the most beautiful flower of the desert. And then uh, she's not spiky and horrible. She's very cuddly and lovable. And I'm very honoured and, uh, you know, privileged to be with her. So the word Tamar also reminds me of that little bit there. The most comely. She is gracious and beautiful to look on. And it's called a palm tree. So mums on mums day. <laughs> a tall stately palm tree blossoms even in the desert. Wherever it is, there is an oasis. When you see the palm tree in the desert, there will be found what you seek most in that parched land. There is nothing more desirable to man moving across a desert than the sight of a palm tree. In our case, to be practical, our objective is the palm tree. That is the stately, beautiful one we seek. Whatever it is that you and I want, what we truly desire is personified in the story as Tamar the Beautiful. Friend, Gansders, what, what? We are told, yes, you would be good to, you would be beneficial for you to look at our recent publications, um, the proclamation, our proclamation of sovereignty um, explained part one. It's on version five, I do believe, final edition that we've uh, released and a proclamation of sovereignty explained part two, version one. And the 13 bloodlines that I just saw flash up on the screen there are listed in there for you. We are told uh, she dresses herself in the veils of a harlot and sits in the public place. Her father-in-law, King Judah, comes by and he is so in love with this one who is veiled that he offers her a kid to be intimate with her. K-I-D. A goat. No, a child. A kid. She said, because it's American English as well, you see, so it's, and it's got English, it's American English written, but it's got English punctuation because I've gone through it already and tidied it up a bit. Not changed, not deleted. But uh, she said, what will you give me as a pledge that you will uh, give me a kid? Looking around, he said, what do you want me to give as a pledge? She answered, give me your ring, give me your bracelets and give me your staff. I think that means as the, uh, you know, the scepter, the orb, the onk and stuff, the staff and the scepter, a bit like the rod. Give me your rod, your staff. Um, 
chief of staff, you see. Whereupon he took his hand, his whereupon he took from his hand the ring and the bracelet and gave them to her along his, with his scepter. And he went unto her and knew her, and she bore him a son. Now that was nice and clean, wasn't it, for a Sunday afternoon at tea time? That is the story. Now for the interpretation. One of the possible interpretations, this author's interpretation. Man has one gift that is truly his to give, and that is himself. He has no other gift. As told you in the very first creative act of Adam begetting the woman out of himself, there was no other substance in the world but himself with which he could fashion. There was no other substance in the, well, fashion the object out of his desire. In like manner, Judah had but one gift that was truly his to give, himself. As the ring, bracelets and the staff symbolised, for these were the symbols of his kingship. Man offers that which is not himself, but life demands that he give the one thing that symbolises himself. Give me your ring, give me your bracelet, give me your scepter. These make the king. When he gives them, he gives of himself. You are the great King Judah. Before you can know your Tamar and make her bear your likeness in the world, you must go unto her and give of self. Suppose I want security. I cannot get it by knowing people who have it. I cannot get it by pulling strings. I must become conscious of being secure. Let us say I want to be healthy. Pills will not do it. Diet or climate will not do it. I'd argue diet possibly could and climate possibly could because of the mountain air. But this is the author's words. You know, we're not here to split hairs. Later, we'll dissect it and you will be given this. Diet or climate change will not do it. I must become conscious of being healthy by assuming the feeling of being healthy. Healthy body, healthy mind, healthy body, healthy mind. Inwardly project, outwardly attract. And with what I've said there above. Perhaps I want to be lifted up in this world. Merely looking at kings and presidents and noble people and living in their reflection or shadow as subjects will not make me dignified. I must become conscious of being noble, no bill, no bell, and dignified and walk as though I were that. I were that. It's written like this. And walk as though I were that I now want to be. It's kind of like um, Yorkshire Americans you're going to get here. When I walk in that light, I give of myself to the image that haunted my mind. And in time, she bears me a child, which means I objectify a world in harmony with that which I am conscious of being. You are King Judah and you are also Tamar. When you become conscious of being that which you want to be, you are Tamar. Then you crystallize your desire within the world round about you. No matter what stories you read in the Bible, no matter how many characters these ancient storytellers introduce into the drama, there is only one thing you and I must always bear in mind. They all take place within the mind of the individual man. All the characters live in the mind of the individual man. As you read the story, make it fit the pattern of self. Know that your consciousness is the only reality. Then you know what you want to be. Then assume the feeling of being that which you want to be and remain faithful to your assumption. Living and acting on your own conviction. Always make it fit that pattern. Pine trees, message of the God. I am that I am, no matter what you tell me I am. Yes, Eric, chat room's loving it. Blue man's off. Our third interpretation is the story of Isaac and his two sons, Esau and Jacob. The picture is drawn of a blind man being deceived by his second son into giving him the blessing which belonged to his first son. The story stresses the point that the deception was accomplished through the sense of touch. And Isaac said unto Jacob, come near, I pray thee that I may feel thee, my son, wherever thou be my son Esau or not, wherever thou be my son Esau or not. And Jacob went near to Isaac, his father, and he felt him and it came to pass as soon as Isaac had made an end of the blessing Jacob and Jacob was yet scarce and gone and from the presence of Isaac his father that Esau his brother came in from his hunting 
Genesis 27, 21 and 30. This story can be very helpful if you will reenact it now and again and again bear in mind that all the characters of the Bible are personifications of abstract ideas and it must be fulfilled in the individual man. You are the blind father and both sons. Isaac is old and blind and sensing the approach of death. He calls his first son Esau, a rough hairy boy, and sends him into the woods that he may bring in some venison. <laughs> Oh, I like that description there. A rough, hairy boy. The second son, Jacob, a smooth skin boy, overheard the request of his father, desiring the birth right of his brother, Jacob, the smooth skin son, slaughtered one of his father's flock and skinned it. Then dressed in the hairy skins of the kid. Hey, the kid, the kid, goat, kid. There you go. He had slaughtered. He came through sub subtly and betrayed his father into believing that he was Esau. The father said, come close, my son, that I may feel you. I cannot see, but come that I may feel. Note the stress that is placed upon feeling in this story. He came close, and the father said unto him, the voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And feeling this roughness, the reality of the son Esau, he pronounced the blessing and gave it to Jacob. You are told in the story that as Isaac pronounced a blessing and Jacob had scarcely gone out from his presence, that his brother Esau came in from the hunting. This is an important verse. Do not become distressed in our practical approach to it. Literalists. For as you sit here, you too are Isaac. This room in which you are seated in, or that you are seated in at present, you are Esau. This is the rough or sensibly known world known by reason of your bodily organs. All of your senses bear witness to the fact that you are here in this room. Everything tells you that you are here, but perhaps you, perhaps you do not want to be here. See you later. I said, if your head's not in the game and you're not ready for this, then um, you better go away and come back when they can, uh, when they can stomach it and uh, you know uh, appreciate the connotations and uh, what go on here. You can apply this towards any objective. The room in which you are seated at any time. The environment in which you are placed. This is your rough or sensibly known world or sun, which is personified in the story of Esau. What you would like in place of what you have or are is your smooth skin state or Jacob, the supplanter. You do not send your visible world hunting as so many people do. You do not send your visible world. It may be C there. That might be a typo. You do not see. You do not send your visible world hunting, as so many people do, by denial. By saying it does not exist, you make it all the more real. Instead, you simply remove your attention from the region of the sensation, which at this moment is the room around you, and you concentrate your attention on that which you want to put in its place. Let's go on to silent mode and again, it's very busy. Um, in concentrating on your objective, the secret is to bring it here. You must make elsewhere here and then now imagine that your objective is so close that you can feel it. What? Suppose at this very moment I want a piano here in this room. Not this little broom cupboard, but in, in a you know in the room, uh, to see a piano in the mind's eye, existing elsewhere does not do it. But to visualise it in this room, in your room, as though it was there, and uh, to put my mental hand upon the piano and to feel it solidly real is to take that subjective state personified as my second son Jacob and bring it so close that I can feel it. Jedi mind tricks. Isaac is called a blind man. You are blind because you do not see your objective with your bodily organs. You cannot see it with your objective senses. We say that, he says that, the author, because obviously man, how man is created and how man is housed, all right? So when you're thinking, what have bodily organs got to do with sensing world? Um, you, man, biological estate, you are housed in that. Your spirit is housed in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a meat bag of chemicals and energy and gas. You only perceive it with your mind. But you bring it so close that you can feel it as though it was real, as though it were real now. 
when this is done and you lose yourself in its reality and feel it to be real, open your eyes. It's kind of like him um, explaining prayer there, isn't it? Manifestation. When you open your eyes, what happens? The room that you had shut out but a moment ago returns from the hunt. <laughs> you no sooner gave the blessing, felt the imaginary state to be real than the objective world, which seemingly was unreal, returns. It does not speak to you with words as recorded of Esau, but the very room around about you tells you by its presence that you have been self-deceived. It tells you that when you lose yourself in contemplation, feeling that you were now what you want it to be, feeling that you now possess what you desire to possess, that you are simply deceiving self. Look at this room. It denies that you... Let me move that a minute. And it's changed. It denies... I've lost it. Look at this room now. You open your eyes, the room is shut up, blah, 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 It denies that you are elsewhere. If you know the law, if you know the law, you now say, even though your brother came through subtly and betrayed me and took your birthright, I gave him your blessing and I cannot retract. In other words, you remain faithful to this subjective reality and you do not take back from it the power of birth you gave it the right of birth and it is going to become objective within this world of yours ours yours because you're you specifically to the uh, the one there is no room in this limited space of yours for two things to occupy the same space at the same time by making the subjective real it resurrects itself within your world take the idea that you want to embody and assume that you are ready it Lose yourself in, the, in this feeling. This assumption is solidly real. As you give it this sense of reality, you have given it the blessing which belongs to the objective world. And you do not have to aid its birth any more than you have to aid the birth of a child or a seed that you plant in the ground. What? The seed that you plant grows. You can plant seeds in the mind. Yes, yes, yes. The seed that you plant grows unaided by a man. For it contains within itself all the power and all the plans necessary for self-expression. Like self-prophesizing, self... Uh, yeah. You can this night reenact the drama of Isaac blessing his second son and see what happens in the immediate future of your world. Your present environment vanishes and all the circumstances of life change and make way for the coming of that to which you have given your life. As you walk knowing that you are what you wanted to be, you objectify it without the assistance of another. And the fourth story for tonight, page 20 of 96, is taken from the last of the books attributed to Moses. If you need proof that Moses did not write it, read the story carefully. It is found in the 34th chapter of the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Ask any priest or rabbi, who is the author of this book? And they will tell you that Moses wrote it. In the 34th chapter of Deuteronomy, you will read of a man writing his own obituary. That is Moses. Moses wrote this chapter. A man may sit down and write what he would like to have placed upon his tombstone. But here is a man who writes his own obituary. And then he dies and so completely rubs himself out that he defies posterity to find where he has buried himself. So, Moses, the servant of the Lord, died here in the lands of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in a valley in the land of Moab, over against Beth Poah. But no man knoweth of his sepulchre until this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died, allegedly. So it's written, remember if he's real or not. He, his eye was not dim nor his natural face abated. Deuteronomy 34, 5, 6 and 7. You must this night, not tomorrow, learn the technique of writing your own obituary and so completely die to what you are that no man in this world can tell you where you buried the old man. 
if you are now ill and you become well and i know you by reason of the fact you are ill where can you point and tell me you buried the sick one if you are impoverished and borrow from every friend you have and then suddenly you roll in wealth where did you bury the poor man you so completely rub out poverty in your mind's eye that there is nothing in this world that can point to and claim that is where i left it a complete transformation of consciousness rubs out all evidence that anything other than this ever existed in the world now that's quite a big one that bit it's a small bit um but it is quite a big one so let me adjust the uh, memory foam and moses went up from the plains of moab into the mountains of nebo nebo to uh, the top pigsca pigsar that is over that is over against jericho and the lord shewed him all the land of gilead unto dan showed shewed you read that verse and say so what but take a concordance and look up these words the first word moses means to draw out to rescue to lift out to fetch in other words moses is the personification of the power in man that can draw out of man that which he seeks for everything comes from within not from without you draw from within yourself that which you now want to express as something objective to yourself i try to i try to do my best you are moses coming out of the plains of moab the word moab is a contradiction of contraction of two hebraic words mem and ab mem and ab alpha bravo meaning mother dash father mother hyphen father your consciousness is the mother father there is no other cause in this world your i amness your awareness your conscionability this is is this moab or mother father is a question you are always drawing something out of it the next word is nebo in your concordance nebo is defined as a prophecy a prophecy is something subjective if i say so and so will be it is an image in the mind it is not yet fact we do that a lot don't we here on this channel with spls kevin and i so shall it be well you must wait and either prove or disprove this prophecy make it so to quote uh, picard in our language nebu is or nebo is your wish your desire it is called a mountain because it is something that appears difficult to ascend and is therefore seemingly impossible of realization a mountain is something bigger than you are it towers over you nebo personifies that which you want to be in contrast to that which you are the word pis p-i-s-g-a-h pisca by definition is to contemplate jericho is a fragrant odor and gilad means the hills of witness the last word is dan the prophet yes dan first dan now put them all together in a practical sense and see what the ancients tried to tell us as i stand here having discovered that my consciousness is god and that i can by simply feeling that i am what i want to transform myself into the likeness of that which i am assuming i am i know now that i am all that it takes to scale this mountain ah then dance like a butterfly and sting like a bee i define my objective i do not call it nebo i call it my desire whatever i want that is my nebo that is my great mountain that i'm going to scale and a lot of us have got a lot of mountains before us right now aren't we i now begin to contemplate it for i shall climb to the peak of piscar i've had a few mountains and we've got many in front of us i must contemplate my objective in such a manner that i get the reaction that satisfies if i do not get the reaction that pleases then jericho is not seen for jericho is a fragrant odor when i feel that i am what i want to be i cannot suppress the joy that comes with that feeling I must always contemplate my objective until I get the feeling of satisfaction personified as Jericho. Then I do nothing to make it visible in my world for the hills of Gilead, meaning men, women and children, 
the whole vast world round about me come bearing witness. They come to testify that I am what I have assumed myself to be and am sustaining within myself. When my world conforms to my assumption, the prophecy is fulfilled. If I now know what I want to be, if I now know what I want to be, now and know, it's just, uh, yeah, them words got me, and assume that I am it, and walk as though I were, I become it, and becoming it, I so completely die to my former concept of self, that I cannot point to any place in this world and say, that is where my former self is buried. I so completely died that I defy posterity to ever find where I buried my old self. Drug addiction, alcohol addiction, anger, giddiness, rebel without a pause. You know, that's partly down to the Gans there. And uh, they've got the green, green original Gans here. Look, it's still on. Um, so I don't know where... Um, certain parts of me my younger self has gone as you get older and mature and you change and you realize and you appreciate and you grow and you learn from the mistakes you change not just the metabolism slowing down the whole body um death of the ego yes brent yes i so uh, we continue on there must be someone in this chat room who will so completely transform himself in this world that can close his immediate circle of friends and they will not recognize him who are you all right la I don't know why I have no disrespect to Liverpool. It just came out by accident at eight. <laughs> Who are you? Um, Acklington Stanley. Who are they? That's the subconscious. That's why it was Liverpool. If you're, uh, if you're not 30, 40, you won't even have a clue. Acklington Stanley. Who are they? Ah, but uh, to the ones that are, that's why Liverpool script out there. <laughs> All right. So for 10 years, I was a dancer dancing on uh, Broadway shows. This is the author. You see where it's coming from now. This is a clue as to this document's origin from the 1930s that I can't believe I found by accident and that I've never um, really read more than once. It's been read twice. This is the third time I continue on. So for 10 years, uh, the author was a dancer dancing in Broadway shows in Vaudeville nightclubs and in Europe. There was a time in their life when I thought they could... I'm going all spiky and tingly and I don't know why... There was a time in their life when they thought they could not live without certain friends in their world. They would spread a table every night after the theatre and we would all dine well. What, what? Now I confess, I could not live without them. We have nothing in common today. When we meet, I could not live without them. We have nothing in common today. When we meet, we do not purposely walk on the opposite side of the street. But it's almost a cold meeting because we have nothing to discuss, nothing in common so the author died to that life as of 10 years as i meet these people they cannot even talk of the old times but there are people living today who are still living in that state getting poorer and poorer you know pure the poor is not pure remember that one being poor doesn't mean that you're pure living in misery oh we've got to suffer in this life so we can rejoice in the next pish all right, so just, I like that bit there. I think that's really something to expand upon with uh, mental states, uh, money, finance, uh, suicides, uh, backlash from Meghan and Harry's interview, etc. So we'll, we'll just pin that, make a note. They always like to talk about the old times. They never buried that man at all. He is all very much alive in their world. So we'll start out again. There are people living today who are still living in that state. They're getting poorer, stuck in past. Are you living in past? They always like to talk about the old times. They never buried that man at all. He is very much alive within their world. So people don't like change, do they? <laughs> oh, changing stuff up. Moving house. What? One of the most stressful things ever. Oh, page 22 of 96. Come on, David. 20 past six. Moses was 120 years. A full wonderful age, as 120 indicates. One plus two plus zero equals the numerical symbol of, symbol of expression. <clears throat> I am fully conscious of my expression. My eyes are undimmed. And the natural functions of my body are not abated. Well, apart from the glasses. 
I am fully conscious of being what I do not want to be. I am fully conscious of being what I do not want to be. I am fully conscious and aware of what I do not want to be is what I would write, but that's how it's written. Um, not a criticism, but don't think I'm, uh, I'm not able to speak. <laughs> but knowing this law by which a man transforms himself, I assume that I am what I want to be and walk in the assumption that it is done. In becoming, in becoming it, the old man dies and all that was related to that former concept of self dies. It would die with you. You cannot take any part of the old man into the new man. You cannot put a new wine into old bottles or new patches on old garments. It, you must be a new being completely. I like that a lot. I like it a lot. As you assume that you are what you want to be, you do not need the assistance of another to make it so. Oh, I don't want to be alone. I can't do it on my own. Yes, you can. As you assume, um, neither do you need the assistance of anyone to bury the old man for you. Let the dead bury the dead. I hear what you're saying. Do not even look back. For no man having put his hand to the plough and then looking back is fit for the kingdom of heaven. You don't want to be turned into salt now, do you either? Do not ask yourself how this thing is going to be. It does not matter if your reason denies it. It does not matter if all the world around you denies it. You do not have to bury the old. Let the bed. Let the dead bury the dead. You will so bury the past by remaining faithful to your new concept of self that you will defy the whole vast future to find where you buried it. To this day, no man in all of Israel has discovered the sepulchre of Moses. Vessels emptying. <laughs> I like that, Brent. These are the four stories I promised you tonight. You must apply them every or this evening. You must apply them every day of your life. Or you must consider. In order for things to change, you must apply them every day of your life. Even though the chair on which you are now seated seems hard and does not lend itself to meditation, you can, by imagination, make it the most comfortable chair in the world. Think of the Buddhist monks that set themselves on fire out of protest and didn't scream. You know, <laughs> that really happened in this realm. Somebody... Um, I wanted to protest and there was a Buddhist monk and they sat there and burned, poured the petrol on. Sorry, it's a family show, but I'm trying to keep it clean. It's good for the little young bloods to know certain stories. You know, um, I'm sure you've seen and heard worse um, before bloodshed by accident. Um, but no, no, um, you know, be careful. But uh, what can I say? A Buddhist monk setting them, dousing themselves in petrol and setting themselves on fire, sitting down calmly and burning to death. So, you know, when I said that about the chair, let me now define the technique as uh, the author wants you to employ it. I trust each one of you and I want you to employ it. I trust each one of you came here, scribes, viewers and readers of this document with a clear picture of your desire. Do not say it is impossible. Do you want it? You do not have to use your moral code to realise it. It is altogether outside the reach of your code. Consciousness is the one and only reality. Therefore, we must form the object of, your, of our desire out of our own consciousness. People have a habit of slighting the importance of simple things and the suggestion to create a state akin to sleep in order to aid you in assuming that you, uh, with which reason and your senses deny, is one of the simple things you might cite, slight. However, this simple formula for changing the future, which was discovered by the ancient teachers and given to us in the bibliotheque, the heliocentric bibliotheque, can be proved by all. The first step in changing the future is desire. That is your define, your objective. You know definitely what the wants. If you don't know what you want, you're not going to get it. Second, construct an, an event in which you believe you would encounter following the fulfillment of your desire an event which implies fulfillment of your desire something which will have the action of self predominant the third step is to immobilize the physical body and induce a state akin to sleep when i say that listen to that i'm going to say that again because it's important the third step is to immobilize the physical body and induce a state akin to sleep by meditation and such other ways, not artificially, not chemically, not with drugs, 
um, try, you know, uh, it's going to take time. We're going to work on this. The mentally, then mentally feel yourself right into the proposed action. Imagine all the while that you are performing the action here and now. You must participate in the imagined reaction, not merely stand back and look on, <laughs> but feel that you are actually performing the action so that the imaginary sensation is then real to you. It is important always to remember that the proposed action must be one which follows the fulfilment of your desire, one which implies fulfilment. For example, suppose you desired promotion in the office, tisk tisk, then being congratulated would be an event that you would encounter following the fulfillment of your desire. Okay, what? I know. Having selected this action, one minute, let me just get the screen better. Having selected this action as the one you will experience in imagination to imply or promotion in the office, immobilize your physical body and induce a state bordering on sleep, a drowsy state but one in which you are still able to control the direction of your thoughts in a state in which you are attentive without effort. There's my water. No. Then visualise a friend standing before you. Put your imaginary hand into his or theirs. Feel it to be solid and real and carry on an imaginary conversation with him in harmony with the feeling of having been promoted. Mentalisation, mentalising. You do not visualise yourself at a distance in point of space and at a distance in point of time being congratulated on your good fortune. Instead, you make elsewhere here and the future now. The difference between feeling yourself in action here and now and visualising yourself in action as though you were on a motion picture screen is the difference between success and failure. That's also labelled as part of the secret that came out some years ago. You know, the secret. Don't let it out the group. Shh, shut up. The difference will be appreciated if you will now visualise yourself climbing a ladder. Then with eyelids closed, imagine that the ladder is right in front of you and feel yourself actually climbing it. Elevation. The ascension of Isaiah. Isaiah. Experience has taught me to restrict the imaginary action which implies fulfilment of the desire, Isaiah, desire, yes, sorry, to condense the idea into a single act and to reenact it over and over again until it has the feeling of reality. Otherwise, your attention will wander off along an associated uh, track and hosts of associated images will be presented to your attention and in a few seconds they will lead you hundreds of miles away from your objective in point of space and years and away in point of time you've deviated from the subject matter i refer you to my paperwork now dr masoro emoto masaro emoto needs to be mentioned the body the water the law the rice water experiment anyone that's done that high five and uh, incredible brilliant um if we're always in a negative state and you're always angry with what I've just read there of this author's work and the, the, uh, the Gnosticism of, uh, of the UNI-verse or even the multiverse of this quantum dielectric magneto-electro you know, realm that we're in and prayer and Christianity and etc. Imagine that you're always angry. We all know a Mr. Angry. We all know an angry boss. We've all worked for an idiot, pilchered, and um, we've all spent a lot of time cussing, stressing, not sleeping now imagine with what we've said there and the positivity that can come from such a simple act why do you think that life is so riddled with negativity stress anger financial worries uncertainty hardship you know and uh, why do you think we uh, we uh, we see and we hear what we see and hear as we do outside by default why do you think love happiness light um, security confidence all the basic things that we excel in in the private out in the public they're lacking in the commercial realm they're lacking in the law realm they're lacking in the realm of many public put your own in where it's lacking where outside in the commercial public realm do you find peace and love other than a park a lake a beach um, a mountain you know so if you're constantly angry constantly stressed constantly thinking oh that's gonna happen that and so you see when we've said before 
you will and manifest these things. I, I blamed everybody for my mistakes in life previously. Turns out it was all to do with me. If you decide to climb a particular flight of stairs because that is the likely event to follow the fulfilment of your desire, then you must restrict the action to climbing that particular flight of stairs. Should your attention wander off with the monkey brain, all right, and it's coming from I, the monkey master, <laughs> bring it back to its task of climbing that flight of stairs and keep on doing so until the imaginary action has all the solidity and distinctness of reality. Remember, there's nothing new under the sun. This might be a document from the 1930s on about books from 400 AD, on about books from X, Y and Z up to 6000 BC. But the, even with that and the pre notices of that 6000 BC and before that, um, <laughs> Sky Gods type, uh, Sky Council, um, Enki, Enlil and uh, Enoch, etc. And um, uh, Magi, Zoroastra, all of it, you know. Um, Haha. <laughs> You know, it's, uh, it's it's what we need to, uh, you know, have a look at and look at these uh, proclamations and uh, ideas, you know, uh, how you would look at this and what's been written and how it's been written and how it's been encoded. And uh, tr truth in plain sight, when we said about the KJV, wasn't that it was a great book. Uh, some of us think it's a great book and may call it your own book, but um, some of us took it for a, an architect's um, guide around trust and equity king james himself quite embarrassing to be fair disgusting is the word i'd use about him the kjv and the contents of it shakespeare another man of which we don't know if he really um is buried where they say or if he's in poet's corner or a whereabouts he is the codings and encodings within shakespeare and what i found about there makes me want to shake my spear um so that's all i'll say on that again um articulations of and what we've found out about is uh, it's a continuation of and continuously improving, continuously analysing. And uh, let's just uh, bear that in mind. Drowsiness facilitates change because it favours attention without effort. But it must not be pushed to the state of sleep in which you are no longer able to control the movements of your attention. Try a moderate degree of drowsiness in which you are still able to detect your thoughts. Falling asleep, watching tube videos, it's silly o'clock in the morning and you're hearing the video, you can hear the video, but you're neither asleep and you're neither awake. And then you start, you know that bit there, brilliant, that's what he's on about. Or when you just wake up, um, what did Tesla do? Tesla used to go to sleep, set his alarm before he was due to wake up, then go back to sleep and then you go to sleep for a little bit and then your alarm goes off again and there's a there's certain things that you can do to we can help with this and we've got uh, we've got information and if you've got any let's hear it <laughs> um, and that's how tesla downloaded and said he got the thoughts allegedly um to um be you know as skilled as he was so again um page 25 of 96 half past six I'll get this done, but we've got a lot to talk about. Make your notes, get your pens out. Like I said, if your head's not in it, go away, come back, take a break, have a pause. Now you know what we're on with, and we're only 25 pages in of 96. We've got a good 70 to go. <laughs> 71. Um, and I'm babbling a bit. I need to, though, because it's key. I think this video is going to be a video that, that gets passed around a lot, that's on the back of um, certain other thought leaders. And, um, you know, the Vatican owning your soul is the key point here. Where is your soul? Where is it? It's not just a soul because there is three and you've got the mind, body and soul as I projected that I view it as the tripart. And this is he. It's all relevant. And do, no, the Vatican do not own your soul. Point fact. But the Vatican have made claims. We'd require proof of claim then, wouldn't we? You know, and they may have done it as a protective measure and not as an evil measure. Just saying, food, food for thought. I'm not saying that the Vatican is a house of saints, even though it should be. It isn't. And I'm not here to vexate and, uh, you know, uh, all of that. So there is new, brand new, up to the minute, continuous improvement all over the shop. So um, the drowsiness and thoughts is where we was. The most effective way to embody a desire is to assume the feeling of the wish fulfilled and then in a relaxed, drowsy state, Repeat over and over again, like a lullaby, any short phrase which implies fulfilment of your desire, such as thank you, thank you, thank you, 
as though you addressed a higher power for having given you that which you desired. I know that when this course comes to an end, many of you here will be able to tell me that you have realised your objectives. It's an actually a week long course you're getting read here. So if you do this all in one, well done. Two weeks ago, I left the platform and went to the door to shake hands with the audience. I am safe in saying that at least 35 out of a class of 135 told me that which they desired when they joined this class they had like already realized this happened only two weeks ago i did nothing to bring it to pass i did nothing to bring it to pass save to give them this technique of prayer you need to do nothing to bring it to pass save it apply this technique of prayer with your eyes closed and your physical body immobilized induced to stay akin to sleep and enter into the actions as though you were an actor playing the part experience in imagination what you had experienced in the flesh were you now in possession of your objective make elsewhere here and now and the greater you using a larger focus will use all means and call them good which tend towards the production of that which you have assumed you are there relieved of all responsibility to make it so because you imagine and feel that it is so your dimensionally larger self determines the means do not think for one moment that someone is going to be injured in order to make it so, or that someone is going to be disappointed. It is still not your concern. I must drive this home. Too many of us schooled in different walks of life are so concerned about the other. You ask, if I get what I want, will it not imply injury to another? Well done for asking. The answer seems to be, there are ways you do not know of, so do not be concerned. And the answer being no. Close your eyes now because we are going to be in a long silence. Soon you will become so lost in contemplation, feeling that you are what you want to be, that you will be totally unconscious of the fact that you are in this room with others. You will receive a shock when you open your eyes and discover we are here. Chat rooms are not physical rooms, remember, they're virtual. It should be a shock when you open your eyes and discover that you are not actually that which a moment before you felt you were or you felt possessed. Now we will go into the deep silence period. And then if this was an actual course and I wasn't rushing this as like a rebel without a pause, then I would uh, I would let us do this and practice a minute silence, you know, um, but we'll, we'll leave it there. I need not remind you that uh, a later date, that uh, I need not remind you that you are now that which you have assumed that you are do not discuss it with anyone not even self you cannot take thought as to the how when you are when you know that you are already your three-dimensional reasoning which is a, a very limited reasoning indeed should not be brought into this drama as it does not know what you have just felt to be true is true let no man tell you that you should not have it. What you feel that you have, you will have. And as I promise you this much, after you have realised your objective on reflection, you will have to admit that this conscious reasoning mind of yours can never have devised the way. You are that and have that which is this very moment you appropriated. Do not discuss it. Do not look to someone for encouragement because the thing might not come. It has Come, go about your father's business, doing everything normally, and let these things happen in your world. Now, this is effectively day two. When I said it's a five-day, week-long uh, chat course, you're on now day two, page 26 of 96. The Bible of ours has nothing to do with history, it seems. Some of you may yet be inclined to believe that. Although we can give it a psychological interpretation, it still could be left in its present form and be interpreted literally. Big problems with that. You cannot do it. The Bible has no reference at all to people or events, as you have been taught to believe. The sooner you begin to rub out that picture, the better. We're going to take a few stories now, and again we're going to remind you that you must reenact all of these stories within your own mind, as explained above previously. 
bear in mind that although they seem to be stories of people fully awake, the drama is really between you, the sleeping one. The deeper you and the conscious waking you, they are personified as people. But when you come to the point of application, you must remember the importance of the drowsy state. And that is an excuse to drink wine or get drunk either. I didn't cover that earlier. I think, I think you may have, but just a drowsy state. When you're at times of tiredness, at the end of the day, do this when you're tired, and, but then you're not going to be able to have the energy to do it. Well, you're going to have to make it. You're going to have to find a way, a technique that suits you, suits you, sir, the universe, sir. Is it look at you, sir? Oh, sir, suits you, sir, and ma'am. And you will find ways, princesses and princes, of uh, getting your your way, your mind to do this. You're, you're comfortable, because not everybody will adopt the same technique. All creation, as we told you previously, takes place in the state of deep, or that state which is akin to sleep, the, dream, the sleepy, drowsy state. We told you the first man is not yet awakened. You are Adam, the first man, still in the profound sleep. The big sleep the creative you is the fourth dimensional you whose home is simply the state you enter when men call you asleep our first story for tonight is found in the gospel of john as you hear it unfold before you i want you to compare in your mind's eye the story you heard previously from the book of genesis the first book of the bible the book of genesis the book first book of moses and the first book of the bible Historians claim is the record of events which occurred on earth some 3,000 years before the events recorded in the book of John. I ask you to be rational about it and see, pardon me, if you do not think the same writer could have written both stories, you can be the judge as to whether the same inspired man could not have told the same story and told it differently. This is a very familiar story, the story of the child of Jesus. In the Gospel of John, it is recorded that Jesus was before, brought before Pontius Pilate and the crowd clamoured for his life. They wanted Jesus. Pilate turned to them and said, But ye have a custom that I should release unto you one at the Passover. Will ye therefore that I release you unto the king of the Jews? Then cried they all again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. John, and you've got 18, 39 and 40. You are told that Pilate had no choice in the matter. Remember the clean hands doctrine that we found some years ago? Well, what, what do you mean, equity? You must have clean hands. Oh, it's like Pontius Pilate, you know. He couldn't find any fault with Jesus, but they washed their hands of him and they killed him anyway. I'm like, what? Hmm. Equity, trust, common law, Bibles, clean hands, dirty hands, caught red-handed, Jesus killing romans too much shut down reboot time you know that was a poignant moment in so um pontius Pilate had no choice in the matter he was only a judge interpreting law and um, one of the caesars and this was the law the people had to be given that which they requested Pilate, p-i-l-a-t-e now like the uh airplane pilot spelling that's points of note for later etymological route references and so forth they changed airplane pilot spelling and obviously i know words sound the same spelled differently but pilate i would pronounce that could not release jesus against the wishes of the crowd and so he released barabbas and gave unto them jesus to be crucified now bear in mind that your consciousness is god there is no other god and you are told that God has a son whose name is Jesus. If you will take the trouble to look up the word Barabbas in your concordance, Bravo, Alpha, Romeo, Alpha, Bravo, Bravo, Alpha, Sierra, you will see that it is a contraction of two Hebraic words, B-A-R, which means a daughter or son or child, and A-B-B-A, -B -B -A, Abba as in the pop group Abba, which means father. Bar Abbas, Bar Abbas, is the son of the great father. And you've got Abracadabra, all right, to go in there. You've got Bar, B-A-R. Who's that? Masonic Sun Temple, 
London Temple BAR Law Society. BAR as in bar license. Bar is in bars of prisons. I need to carry on. Beer all neat, David. Um, and Jesus in the story is called the Saviour, the Son of the Father. We have two sons in this story and we have two sons in the story of Esau and Jacob. Bear in mind that Isaac was blind and justice to be true must be blind folded. Although in this case Pilate is not physically blind, the part given to Pilate implies that he is blind because he is a judge. On all the great law buildings of the world we see the lady or the man who represents justice as being what? Blindfolded. Judge, not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. John 7, 24. It's getting good now, isn't it? And we're not even halfway through. We're a quarter of the way through. And we um, I hope you're loving this. Here we find Pilate is playing the same part as Isaac. There are two sons. All the characters, as they appear in the story, can apply to your own life. You have a son. That is robbing you this very moment of which that you could be. Don't take that literally. If you came to this meeting. John, where are you? Especially if your son's called John. If you came to this uh, viewing uh, video and um, replay. Conscious of wanting something. Desiring something. You walked in the company of Barabbas. Or Bar Abbas. For to desire is to confess that you do not now possess what you desire. And because all things are yours, you rob yourself by living in the state of desire. My saviour is my desire. As I want something, I'm looking into the eyes of my saviour. But if I continue wanting it, I deny my Jesus, my saviour. For as I want, I confess I am not. And except ye believe that I am he. Ye die in your sins. I cannot have and continue to desire what I have. I may enjoy it, but I cannot continue wanting it. Right, now is the great, is the feast of Passover. Passing over. It's got connotations of zodiacs and heavens and things passing over or arcing over, spiralling around, whichever way, um, position you may be. Flat, round or hollow or holographic are the four possibilities of this round but the Passover something passing over let it pass talk about the feast of the Passover something is going to change right now um, something is going to pass over man is incapable of passing over from one state of consciousness into another unless he releases from consciousness that which now he entertains for it will anchor him where he is you and I may go to physical feasts year after year as the sun enters the great sign of Aries. But it means nothing to the true mystical Passover. To keep the feast of the Passover, the psychological feast, I pass from one state of consciousness into another. Josh Wink's higher state of consciousness. The amount of times I've DJed that track and every time I hear this or these kind of statements I hear higher state and do -do 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 with a tweaking acid dance track of a probably an eight minute mix that will never die in my mind which i bootlegged with them um, back once again for the renegade master d4 damager power to the people d4 damager with the words onto josh link track so higher state of consciousness the most high ali g remember when he came out but is you the most high <laughs> who is the most high <laughs> I am the most high. Why do you smoke? Why do you drink? To get high. Why do you get high? To go up and be high. High court. High priest. High court rulings. Left, right and centre. I can't even talk about them right now. But there is more to go with them. Um, um, to go with a lot of uh, case law that we have at, at the minute. You know, so. I. Uh, how do we do it then? Higher state of consciousness. I do it by releasing Barabbas. The thief and robber that robs me of the state which I could embody within my world. The state I seek to embody is personified in the story as Jesus the Saviour. If I become what I want to be, then I am saved from what I was. If I do not become it, I continue to keep locked within me a thief who robs me of being that which I could be. These stories have no reference to any persons who lived, nor to any event that ever occurred upon the earth, it would seem. Some might say... 
these characters are everlasting characters in the mind of every man in the world renowned. You and I perpetually keep alive either Barabbas or Jesus. You know at every moment of time who you are entertaining. Do not condemn a crowd for clamouring that they should release Barabbas and crucify Jesus. It is not a crowd of people called Jews. They had nothing to do with it. If we are wise, we should... We, sh we too should clamour for the release of that state of mind that limits us from being that what we want to be, that restricts us, that does not permit us to become the ideal that we seek and strive to attain in this realm and world. I am not saying that you are not to now to, to embody Jesus or you're not embodying Jesus. I only remind you that if at this very moment you have an unfulfilled ambition, then you are entertaining that which denies the fulfillment of the ambition and that which denies it is Barabbas. To explain the mystical psychological transformation known as the Passover or the crossing over, you must now become identified with that ideal that you would serve and you must remain faithful to the idea. If you remain faithful to it, you not only crucify it by your faithfulness, but you resurrect it unaided by a man. And we use when somebody's passed away, passed, passed away. They have passed, pass over, passing. Oh, are you passing any solids? There's the doctors must have said that to one of you a few times. <laughs> Sorry, got to add some humour into this. It's hard work reading 45,000 words as quick as you can. Well, not as quick as you can, but, bear, but being time conscious and needing to get on and have dinner. It's uh, Mother's Day. I'd like to give our lass a, a quick hug before bedtime. And we're going to go live again with Kevin in a bit, possibly about 10 bells. PM GMT. A lot of breathing. It's like a marathon. Obviously, rebel without a pause is died. Is dying. Is almost dead. Giddy ass Indy. And I want to be... A personification of what can and will and was and is um, not just here to read things I want to uh, I want to be living evidence for you I want to be an inspiration um, if that's possible this video is going to get thousands of views let's do it on let's do this video let's make ah let's put money where mouth is this is going to be one of the biggest videos on tube about this subject this is going to be one of the most iconic videos next to Jordan and Santos's videos. This video will be shared the realm over. This video, this author's content, this, your chats and chirps, it's on here, the live feed, you know, that if you stay around and you, uh, you, you chat, it will be recorded forever in time. What you say and do, your words, your actions, your morality, see, so um, what we inwardly, we outwardly, see it, believe it, tell the universe, make plans. This is going to be one of my biggest videos. It's going to be iconic and it's going to save souls. It's going to make it save souls. Does the Vatican own your soul? You see, we're going to we're going to once and for all. I don't want to keep repeating myself. I've got lots to do. I've got lots more to write. I found this by accident. It encompasses everything of which we've said. I've never read it fully in the last five, ten years, however long I've had it. I've only skimmed it briefly. I read it once the other day. This is my third reading. All right. So I haven't stolen from this. You can rewind and check all of my publications and what we've put. And we haven't copied this word for word or anything. But when I saw it and I read it, I was like next to the Kabbalion, the Hymns of Hermes, the Lament of Hermes, the Corpus Hermetica, Helena Blavatsky, Lovecraft, Crowley, Hall, um, Shakespeare, other such things. I was like, this needs to be shared. If you do know the author, please type it now. And I'll take a moment and a breath. Just let me have a intermission um and you can have an intervention go get a brew get yourself comfy um who is this author anybody ever heard of this so far I'm on page 29 of 96 does it ring any bells ever seen it written anywhere is there anybody reading this on tube link me up please if not we're going to continue on with this and uh, as i've said it is what it is and it embodies many many things buried in the archives to explain the mystical psychological transformation known as the Passover or the crossing over, you must now become identified with the ideal that you would serve and you must remain faithful to that ideal. If you remain faithful to it, not only do you crucify it by your faithfulness, but you resurrect it unaided by a man. You do it yourself. 
did it myself. If we give you set instructions and re-encode the encodings of the codexes and give you the truth, we can. I can promise you on my heart, I will put my money where my mouth is. Um, the 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 way that this pathway is gone, the Gansdas and the miracleness that come with that one man alone, all of the scribes that I've met, all of the meetings, the emails, the contacts, the synchronicity we are formulating, and we are when I say mental alchemy, you know, so uh, Claire popping up, neuro linguistic programming, um, all of the females that we've asked to speak to, um, women, omegas, and um, what's happening here, the, the way that it goes, so doing it ourselves. Asking for once upon a time, I said it'd be lovely if we could find somebody that was on the autistic spectrum. I believe we're all on the spectrum of autism, as does a great many of us. But if we could find somebody that was heavily um, jeopardy, uh, six o'clock, uh, Dustin Hoffman, Rain Man, styly, and um, you know that, then get them to come along and have a chat, and then uh, get our publications remedies and go have a look at that, mate. Give us a, and then they could just quickly from the mind meant. That would be, and I've uh, we found somebody. He's called John. What? He's got my phone number. He's read a proclamation of sovereignty. He attends high courts regularly, and uh, I do that on purpose because I hate that word. He regularly attends high court scenarios. He's called John. I prayed for him. I asked the universe for somebody who's on an autistic spectrum who goes to courts that could help us with what we do and our works and our remedies and our language and our status and our passe syntax quantum and everything such as. And um, two years later, Brother Kevin and Golden Graham, I've got a friend called John, who's on the autistic spectrum, who's highly intellectual. He attends high courts every day. He's read a proclamation of sovereignty, part one, um, the opus, as Golden G has called it, the opus. I see David sent us an, an opus to read. Bless you. Um, it will be a fine night tonight. Um, and uh, he's read it and he said, who is this author and how can I speak to him? I'm like, what do you mean? He wants to speak to me. I prayed for this man two years ago and he's appeared. So again, um, testamentary evidences. Two years. I prayed. I wanted to speak to Santos for a good 15 years. Easily 10 minimum. Easily 10, probably 15 took me all that time to get a hangout with him and when i got a hangout with him on sun and moon with sister karen what happened i was very calm i was very we'll go back and watch it uh, and i'll review it i uh, i believe i got comments saying hey david who was that i was like that was santos me and uh, sister karen having a chirp on tube boom and uh, they were like no you you were very calm you were very reserved and you could tell i was holding myself back and I was, I was, uh, I was so happy to meet an idol. And I actually, thou shall not make. But there I did put him up on the pedestal. Love him to bits, like a brother. Nothing to negative about Santos on this video at all. I reiterate, he's a legend, a living legend, and he's done more for humanity than most men alive. So know that. But meeting the ones you put up there, how we do that, shouldn't have done that. I'm just an everyday schmo. People say to me, can't believe I'm talking to Indy. Can't believe I'm talking to Dave. Uh, hey, up, all, you know, and, and I'm like, why? I'm just a fool from Tube, a man who's a frequented on Facebook and designed um, an educational video, academic, uh, social, lawful site of which we can now exist privately as humans with men. All family, you know, and so, uh, you know, I'm just David. I'm just your brother. No, no, it's a lot. And I, I get, I, so I say humbly, thank you. And, uh, you know, these these things here, when I was uh, trying, trying, I was really trying hard on that video with Santos and Sun and Moon. I was so excited and I, I was like, ooh, proper boa tell there could have exploded like a like a big explosion of uh, of quantumness of all of the bombs that man has and more. And it still wouldn't even come close to how happy I was. So uh, prayer. Um, wishing wishful thinking no it isn't wishful thinking that won't get you nowhere crying on your knees in a church that's built to house the suffering when they know this they know they know i know that they know they know that i'm not fond of asking so you know it's it's truly one of these uh one of these moments here where i've got loads where you can say ah oh, but i need evidence dave don't worry we've got it we've got more evidence than we have negativity all right so bless up thank you to all of them mentioned so far, thank you for sticking on. Is there anyone still here? It says 21. Santos Hart, yay. Hello, Claire. Yes. 
Is that the Claire Claire that I spoke to the other day, yay? <laughs> let's do it properly, let's get the lion. I'm so gutted that that won't. It's a lovely ring, that is. I'm going to get a better picture and show you on the uh, on tube and on the on the nav on the places. If you want one of these, I'm going to uh, I'm going to get you some. Not the greatest quality. That's just for a joke. I do that just for a joke. I thought Dave was wearing an Illuminati ring. The king and the knowledge. I've only put this on just for now. I don't wear this all the time. It's very very bad quality, but I'm having a laugh. I'm having a giraffe. And I've got the lion. For the right hand for the power, and we've got the left hand for the knowledge and the gnosis and the kingman, king knowledge, lion on its own. Don't put the lion next to that. And the lion is the king of the jungle, but I wanted to give you a little bit. So, all right, prayers. Brilliant. Idolatry, not so great. Get into what you want. Um, unbelievable. Waiting long time? Oh, yes. Happening overnight? Not a chance. So, as the story goes, no man could rise early enough to roll away the stone. Unaided by man, the stone was removed, and what steamingly was dead and buried was resurrected unassisted by a man. You walk in the consciousness of being that which you want to be. No one sees it as yet. Pardon me. But you do not need a man to roll away the problems and the obstacles of life in order to express that which you are conscious of being. That state has its own unique way of being embodied in this world, of becoming flesh that the whole world may touch it. Now you can see the relationship between the story of Jesus and the story of Isaac and his two sons, where one transplanted the other, where one was called the supplanter of the other. Why do you think sup, supposition, sub, sub, supplanted, sub, supposition? Ah, why do you think those who compiled the 60 odd books of our Bible made Jacob the forefather of Jesus? They took Jacob, who was called the supplanter, and made him father of twelve. Then they took Judah, or praise, the fifth son, and made him the forefather of Joseph, who is supposed to have fathered in some strange way. This one called Jesus. Jesus must supplant Barabbas, as Jacob must supplant and take the place of Esau. Now, you can sit right here and conduct the trial of your two sons, one of whom you want released. You can become the crowd who clamours for the release of the thief and the judge who will willingly release Barabbas and sentence Jesus to fill his place. He was crucified on Golgotha, the place of the skull, the seat of the imagination. To experience the Passover or passage from the old to the new concept of self, you must release Barabbas. Your present concept of self, which robs you of being that or which you could be, and you must assume the new concept which you desire to express. The best way to do this is to concentrate your attention upon the idea of identifying yourself with the ideal. Assume you are already that which you seek and your assumption. Though false, if sustained, will harden into fact. Case in point. Tip of the day. <laughs> Happy holidays. You will know when you have succeeded in releasing Barabbas, your old concept of self, and when you have successfully crucified Jesus or fixed a new concept of self by simply looking mentally at the people you know. If you see them as you formerly saw them, you have not changed your concept as of yet, your concept of self. For all changes of concepts of self result in a change relationship to your world. We always seem to others an embodiment of the ideal we inspire. Therefore, in meditation, we must imagine that others see us as they would see us were we what we desire to be. Were we what? You can release Barabbas and crucify and resurrect Jesus if you will first define your ideal. Then relax, know what you want, know thyself. Ah. Then relax in a comfortable armchair, induce a state of consciousness akin to sleep and experience in imagination what you would experience in reality were you already that which you desire to be. By this simple method of experiencing in imagination what you would experience in the flesh were you the embodiment of the ideal you serve, you release Parabas who robbed you of your greatness and you crucify and resurrect your saviour. Or the ideal you desired to express. Now let us turn to the story of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Bear in mind that a garden is a properly prepared plot of ground. 
it is not a wasteland you are preparing this ground called Gethsemane by coming here and studying and doing something about your mind by viewing this video you know by taking the time to complete it by giving me a thumbs up 22 thumbs up wow 23 scribes thank you welcome if your head's not in the space it's been two hours what you're still doing here go away have a break come back don't try and do this all in once all at once it's, it's a five day amount of information given to you two hours so far and i'm 30 pages so a good four hours I'm finishing about half past eight and if I don't finish right reading this at half past eight half past then we'll come back and do a part two um, and if you watch both of these part one and part two in the same day then well done amazing thank you I told you it was incredible I've been so excited to bring it out and uh, I'm not going to rush it I'm not going to ruin it but uh, I need to interject I need to segue because if I don't then uh, it'll be annoying when I watch it back I think I should have said should have said should have said you know so i know it may be annoying you'll have the document later and it will be given to you without the whiffle waffle and the pish pash all right so spend some time daily in preparing your mind by reading good literature listening to good music and entering into conversations that ennoble we are told in epistles whatsoever things are true whatsoever things are honest whatsoever things are just whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are of good report if there be any virtue and if there be any praise think on these things phil 418 continuing with our story as told in the 18th chapter of john jesus is in the garden and suddenly a crowd begins to seek him he is standing there in the dark and he says whom seek ye the spokesman called Judas answers and says, We seek Jesus of Nazareth. A voice answers, I am he. He's a very naughty boy. He's not the Messiah and he's not coming out to play. <laughs> what they did there. At this instant, they all fall to the ground. Thousands of them tumbled. That in itself should stop you right there and let you know it could not be a physical drama because no one could be so bold in his claim that he is the one sought that he could cause thousands of seek him to fall, drop to the ground. The story tells us they all fell to the ground. Then when they regained their composure, they asked the same question. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore ye seek me, let these go their way. Look at John 18, 8. Then said Jesus unto him, that thou dost do quickly. John 13, 27. Judas, who has to do it quickly. <laughs> I can never say that without giggling. Judas, who has to do it quickly, goes out and commits suicide. That's not the funny part. The, the quick part is. Now to the drama. You are in your garden of Gethsemane. Or prepared mind, if you can. While you are in a state akin to sleep, control your attention and not let it wander away from its purpose. If you can do that, you are definitely in the garden. Garden. Eden, E-D-I-N, Eden, paradise, garden of Eden, same place, different place, garden of Eden, garden, paradise, pair of dice, ooh, too much to segue on there, continuing on, very few people can sit quietly and not enter a revere or a state of uncontrolled thinking, monkey mind, when you can restrict the mental action and remain faithful to your watch, watchman of the mind, not permitting your attention to wander all over the place, but to hold it without effort within a limited field of presentation to the state you are contemplating, then you are definitely in this disciplined presence in the Garden of Gethsemane. Not physically there, you see. What, a, what an absolutely banging publication. Gold, you're indestructible. And it's lasted from 1930s all the way till this day, 14th of March, Mother's Day, 2021. And I don't think I've ever heard or seen anything like this in all quite my time on this realm. The suicide of Judas is nothing more than the changing of your concept of yourself. And when you know what you want to be, you have found your Jesus or saviour. When you assume that you are what you want to be, you have died to your former concept of self. Judas committed suicide. And are now living as Jesus. You can 
and become at will detached from the world round about you and attached to that which you want to embody within your world now i know what some of you are thinking i'm not going to say it but i can hear what some of you are saying about world realm actors and parts now that you have found me now that you have found that which would save you from what you are let go of that which you are and all that it represents in the world become completely detached from it in other words go out and commit no oh, in other words um, hypothetically speaking go out and um, commit suicide i don't want anybody to physically die i don't want anybody to get harmed in any way let me reiterate that but uh, personify hypothetically speaking to translate the translations of this you would go out and the old self would die um i'm going to change that we're not going to publish that with the words commit suicide in red pen now but it ties in and you know as long as you are mature and you are um, in a safe place, you won't go out and commit suicide <sighs> physically. You completely die to what you formerly expressed in this world, and you now completely live to that which no one saw as true of you before. You are as though you had died by your own hand, and as though you had committed suicide. You took your own life by becoming detached in consciousness from what you formerly kept alive, and you begin to live that to which you have discovered in the garden, your garden, you have found your saviour. It is not men falling, not a man betraying another, but you detaching your attention and refocusing your attention in an entirely new direction. From this moment, as you walk through, and from this moment on, you walk as though you were that which you formerly wanted to be. Remaining faithful to your new concept of yourself, you die or commit suicide. No one took your life. You laid it down yourself. You must be able to see the relation of this to the death of Moses, where he so completely died and that no one could find where he was buried. You must see the relationship of the Jeff death of Judas, the Jeff of Judas, <laughs> the death of Judas. He is not a man who betrayed a man called Jesus. The word Judas is praise. It is Judah. To praise, to give thanks, to explode with joy. As I once did when I first met that man Santos. You do not explode with joy unless you are identified with the ideal you seek and want to embody in this world. When you become identified with the state you contemplate, you cannot suppress your joy. It rises like the fragrant odour described as Jericho in the Old Testament. I'm trying to show you that the ancients told the same story in all the stories of the Bible. All that they're trying to tell us is how to become that which we want to be. Do that you want to be. You got to live your life. That was a good tune back in the day, weren't it? Do what you want to do. Who sung that? Free. Can't remember. Good little banger that were in mid-90s, weren't it? Late 90s. Oh, got that stuck in your head now, have I? Sorry, I know I can't hold a tune, but I will just continue to express. You do not need to uh, need another to become now what you really want to be. Now we turn to a strange story in the Old Testament, one that very few priests and rabbis will be bold enough to mention from their pulpits. Here is one who is going to receive the promise as now you receive it. His name is Jesus. Only the ancients called him Joshua or Joshua, Yehoshua ben Nun. Or saviour, son of the fish, a eh, fish man. The saviour of the great deep. Nun, N-U-N, means fish. In the beginning, there was the nun, the great noon, the nun. Again, going back to Egypt and the nun, the great... Uh, oh, nun means fish, and fish is the element of the deep, the profound sea. Yehoshua means Jehovah, Jehovah, saves. And Ben means the offspring or son of, B-E-N. I didn't know that. So... He was called the one who brought the fish age. Fish man. This story is in the sixth book of the Bible, the book of Joshua. A promise is made to Joshua as it is made to Jesus in the anglicised form of the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Spring, summer, autumn and winter. In the Gospel of John, Jesus says, All things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. John 17, 7. And all mine are thine, and mine are mine. Thine, I say thine a lot. Is it mine or thine? They say that in Barnsley, thine. John 17, 10. 
in the Old Testament, in the book of Joshua, it is said in these words, every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon that I have given unto you. <laughs> um, Joshua 1, 3. It does not matter where it is. Analyze the promise and see if you can accept it literally. It is not physically true, but it is psychologically true. Wherever you can stand in this world mentally, that you can realize. Joshua is haunted by this promise that wherever he can place his foot, the foot is understanding, okay? And wherever the sole of his foot shall tread, that will be given unto him. He wants the most desirable state in the world, the fragrant city, the delightful state called Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. He finds himself barred by the impossible walls of Jericho. He is on the outside as you are now on the outside. You are functioning three dimensionally and you cannot seem to reach the fourth dimensional world where your present desire is already concrete objective reality. You cannot seem to reach it because your senses bar you from it. Reason tells you it is impossible. All things round about you tell it is not true. Now you employ the services of a harlot and a spy and her name is Rahab. The word Rahab simply means the spirit of the father r-a-c-e capitalized means the breath or spirit and a-b capitalized altogether a and a b capital a-b the father happy dictionary Ab. all right the father hence we find that this harlot is the spirit of the father and the father is man's awareness of being aware man's i amness man's consciousness your capacity to feel is the great spirit of the father that's right i did say harlot i'm aware of what i just said there and i'm, I'm going to continue on your capacity to feel is the great spirit of the father and capacity is rahab in this story she has two professions that of a spy and that of a harlot the profession of a spy is this to <laughs> and i won't say that to tra comrade to travel secretly to travel so quietly that you may not be detected that there is not a single spy in this world who can travel so quietly that he will all be together be altogether unseen by others cloak of invisibility um, he may be wise in concealing his ways he may never be truly apprehended but every moment of his time he runs the risk of being detected when you are sitting quietly with your thoughts, there is no man in the world so wise that he can look and tell you what you are, where or what, you know, you are mentally dwelling upon or where you are dwelling. I can stand here and place myself in London, knowing London quite well. I can close my eyes and assume that I am actually standing in London. If I remain with this state long enough, I will be able to surround myself with the environment of London as though it was solid, concrete, objective fact. Physically, I am still here, but mentally, I am there, thousands of miles away, and I have made elsewhere here. I do not go there as a spy. I mentally make elsewhere here. And now, sorry, <laughs> can't have a laugh. And now, uh, uh, make elsewhere here and then now. You cannot see me dwelling there, so I think I have just gone to sleep and that I am still here in this world. This three-dimensional world that is now San Francisco, a clue to the author there, 1930s America, Broadway, and now we've got San Francisco. This three-dimensional world that is now San Francisco, as far as I am physically concerned, I am here, but no one can tell me where I am when I enter the moment of meditation. Rahab's next profession was that of a harlot, which is to grant unto men what they ask of her without asking man's right to ask. If she be an absolute harlot, as her name implies, then she possesses all and can grant all that man asks of her. She is there to serve and not to question man's right to seek what he seeks of her. You have within the capacity to appropriate a state without knowing the means that will be employed to realise that end and you assume the feeling of the wish fulfilled Whew, without having any of the talents that men claim you must possess in order to do so. When you appropriate it in consciousness, you have employed the spy and because you can embody that state within yourself by, act by actually giving it to yourself, you are the harlot for the harlot satisfies the man who seeks her. 
you can satisfy self by appropriating the feeling that you are what you want to be. And this assumption, though false, that is although reason and the senses deny it, if persisted in, will harden into fact. Actually embody by actually embodying that which you have assumed you are, you have the capacity to become completely satisfied. Satisfaction will be guaranteed, I believe. Unless it becomes a tangible, concrete reality, you will not be satisfied. You will remain frustrated. You are told in this story that when Rahab went into the city to conquer it, the command given to her was to enter the heart of the city, the heart of the matter, the very centre of it. Not deviate from the subject matter, from the heart of the matter. At the heart of equity, you will find the doctrine of notices. It lies at the very heart of equity. And there remain until I come. Do not go from house to house. Do not leave the upper room of the house into which you enter. If you leave the house and there be blood upon your head, it is upon your head. But if you do not leave the house and there be blood, it shall be upon my head. Rahab goes into the house, rises to the upper floor, and there she remains while the walls crumble. That is, we must keep high mood if we if we would walk with the highest. We must keep a high mood if we would walk with the highest. All right? Most high? <sighs> Going to get high? <sighs> Who is the highest? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, in, uh, in a very veiled manner, the story tells us that when the walls crumbled and Joshua entered, the only one who was saved in the city was, was the spy and the harlot, whose name was Rahab. This story tells what you can do in this world. You will never lose the capacity to place yourself elsewhere and make it here. You will never lose the ability to give unto yourself what you are bold enough to appropriate as true of self. It has nothing to do with the womb man who played that part. The explanation of the crumbling of the walls is simple. You are told that he blew upon the trumpet seven times and at the seventh blast the walls crumbled and he entered victoriously into the state that he sought. Seven is a stillness, a rest, the Sabbath. For me, Saturday. It is the state when man is completely unmoved in his conviction that the thing is. When I can assume the feeling of my wish fulfilled and go to sleep, unconcerned, undisturbed, I am at rest mentally. And I am keeping the Sabbath or am blowing the trumpet seven times. And when I reach that point, the walls crumble. Circumstances alter. Then remold themselves in harmony with my assumption. As they crumble, I resurrect that which I have appointed within. The walls, the obstacles, the problems crumble of their own weight, their own volition. If I can reach the point of stillness within me, that is. The man who can fix within his own mind's idea, with his own mind's eye, an idea, even though the world would deny it. If he remains faithful to that idea, he will then begin to see it manifested. There is all the difference in the world between holding the idea and being the idea. Or being held by the idea. Become so dominated by an idea that it haunts the mind as though you were it. Then regardless of what others may say, you are walking in the direction of your fixed attitude of mind. You are walking in the direction of the idea that dominates the mind. As we told you before, you have but one gift. And that gift that is truly yours to give, that is yourself, basically, your energy. there is no other gift that you must there is no other gift you must press it out of yourself by an appropriation it is there within you now for creation is finished there is nothing to be that is not now there is nothing to be created for all things are already yours they are all finished although man may not be able to stand physically upon a state he can always he can always stand mentally upon any desired state. By standing mentally, I mean that you can now at this very moment close your eyes and visualize, visualize a place other than um, your present one and assume that you are actually there. You can feel this to be so real that upon opening your eyes, you are amazed to find that you are not physically there. 
oh, I had a bit of a daydream, you know, when you've daydreamed and uh, daydream with the flowers. <laughs> On a daydream in a... I like that tune, the daydreams. This mental journey into the desired state with its subsequent feeling of reality is all that is necessary to bring about its fulfillment. Your dimension, dimensionally greater or higher self has ways that the lesser or the three dimensional you not know of. Furthermore, to the greater you, all means are good, which promote the fulfillment of your assumption. Remain in the mental state defined as your objective until it has the feeling of reality. And all the forces of heaven and earth will rush to aid its embodiment. Your greater self will influence the actions and words of all who can be used to aid the production of your fixed mental attitude. Now we're going to turn to the book of Numbers. And here we find a strange story. A strange. I've got the tooth in look, but suddenly developed a silly little whistles like a Something that you get when you're an old man, that isn't it, David? What? Now we turn to the book of Numbers, and here we find a strange story. I trust that some of you have had this experience as described in the book of Numbers. It says Bok, but we'll say Book. They speak of the building of a tabernacle at the command of God, that God commanded Israel to build him a place of worship. Worship. He gave them all the specifications of the tabernacle. It had to be an elongated, movable place of worship, and it had to be covered with skin. Need you be told anything more? Let's go again. If you can tell me what that is, I'd like you to type it now. All right. There is a tabernacle that God commanded Israel to build him. A place of worship. He gave a worship. He gave them all the specifications of the tabernacle, and it had to be G-Man's got it. G-Man's got it. Boom. Whistling to the cat. Easy, Dom. Stop it. i got to look at that later. So uh, need you be told anything more? It had to be elongated with a movable place of worship. G-Man, you are swift and sharp and you know. You know and I know that you know. It had to be covered with skin. It's not an elongated, you know, something. Can you imagine now some, some things that have come to mind there? G-Man put it straight out of the... Uh, you know, wandering areas of, oh, oh, elongated, covered with skin. Ooh, it's a bit weird, David. There we go, straight away. N know ye not that ye are of the temple of God, and that ye are the spirit of God, dwelleth in you. Yes, 1 Corinthians and 3 and 16. A 1 Corinthians, I Corinthians 3, 16. You've also got the dome and you've got the temple. There is no other temple, not a temple made with hands, but a temple eternal, temporal in the heavens. This temple is elongated and it is covered with skin and it moves across the desert looking for the palm tree. And on that, on the day that the tabernacle was reared up, the cloud covered the tabernacle, um, namely the tent of testimony cloud. Um, Santos brought out Sal Abraham, Sal Abraham, Sarah Abraham. Abraham, Ibrahim, you've got the uh, the segment of the cutting of the dissection of the brain, Ra, pineal, the eye of Ra, yeah, so, phew, um, where did I get to, I've ruined that now, haven't I, and on that day, the tabernacle was reared up, the cloud covered, was reared up, the cloud covered the tabernacle, namely, the, the, the punctuation's not quite right, <laughs> tabernacle, namely, the tent of the testimony, and at even there was upon the tabernacle as it were the appearance of fire until the morning so it was always the cloud covered it by day and the appearance of fire by night numbers 9 15 to 16 what the command given to israel was to tarry until the cloud ascended by day and the fire by night blood fire whether it were two days or a month or a year. It does actually say whether it were. That's Yorkshire speak. Whether it was two days or a month. Whether it were two days or a month or a year. That the cloud tarried upon the tabernacle. Remaining thereon. The children of Israel abode in their tents and journeyed not. But when it was taken up. 
they journeyed. Numbers 9 and 22. You know that you are the tabernacle, but you may wonder, what is the cloud? I just said the brain. That was one aspect of it brought by Santos. You know that you are the but what is it? In meditation, many of you must have seen it. In meditation, this cloud, and this is where it gets a bit funky now, like the subsoil waters of an artisan well, of an artisan well springs spontaneously through your head and forms itself into pulsating golden rings then like a gentle river they flow from your head in a stream of living rings of gold in a meditative mood bordering on sleep the cloud ascends apparently it's never happened to me yet i can't i'm not, i wouldn't anybody anybody bueller bueller it is in this drowsy state that you should assume that you are that which you desire to be and that you have that which you seek. For the cloud will assume the form of your assumption and fashion a world in harmony with itself. The cloud is simply the garment of your consciousness and where your consciousness is placed, there you will be in the flesh also. This golden cloud comes in meditation. There is a a, a Merkabas and white triangles and spinning things and you know there's all kinds of paradigms in this um, to bring into play as well but the golden cloud comes in meditation there is a certain point where you are approaching sleep that it is very very thick very liquid and very much alive and pulsing it begins to ascend as you reach the drowsy meditative states <laughs> i just realized what i've said out loud bordering on sleep i hope you're smiling you do not strike the tabernacle neither do you move it until the cloud begins to ascend the cloud always ascends when man approaches the drowsiness of sleep aha for when a man goes to sleep whether he knows it or not he slips from the from three-dimensional world into a fourth dimensional world and that which is ascending into is the consciousness of that man in a greater focus it is a fourth dimensional focus and when we hear um uh, dropping names like tesla again nikolai i was uh, given the inspiration of the microwave that's not the convection oven cooker that poisons you and uh, so forth and um, the microwave as in um radio wave fm wave micro you get me radio waves um he was given the impression the idea and he got the microwave from the bible reading the bible somebody another professor i wonder if you can name him got the idea of the 11th dimension by reading the bibliotech and 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 then looking into the translations of the possible meanings and the examinations and the interpretations of the stories not taking them literally so we continue on what you now see ascending is your greater self when that begins to ascend you enter into the actual state of feeling you are what you want to be that is the time you lull yourself into the mood of being what you want to be by either experiencing in imagination what you would experience in reality were you already that which you want to be or by repeating over and over again the phrase that implies you have already done what you want to do do i need effects a phrase such as the lord's voice Di -di 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 the voice of jebus Di -di 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 <laughs> some kind of rasta disco reggae sensey you know uh, <laughs> oh yes the born identity born again born again oh, sorry born again sweden a phrase such as, isn't it wonderful, isn't it wonderful, as though some wonderful thing had happened to you. In a dream, in a vision of the night, my life, oh yeah. Oh sorry, it was uh, the rhythm of the night. It wasn't a vision of the night, but there you go, to replace that other tune I gave you. There's a new tune, this week's highest climber. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when the deep sleep falleth upon men, in slumberings, upon the bed then he openeth the ears of men and sealeth their instruction job oh, sorry job 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 33 15 to 16 use wisely the interval preceding sleep assume the feeling of the wish fulfilled and go to sleep in this mood at night in a dimensionally larger world when deep sleep falleth upon men 
They see and play the parts that they will later on play on Earth. What? No way. I've just gone really tingly and excited, um, electricity charged. And the drama is always in harmony. Stop laughing at me. Stop laughing at me. Keep on. And the drama is always in harmony with that, which their dimensionally greater selves read and play um, through them. Oh, I'm going spiky again now. Our illusion of uh, free will is but ignorance of the causes which make us act. The sensation which dominates the mind of man as he falls asleep through false will harden into fact. Tip of the day. Assuming that the feeling of the wish was fulfilled as we fall asleep is the command to this embodying process saying to our mood, be thou actual. In this way, we become through a natural process what we desire to be. I can tell you dozens of personal experiences where it seemed impossible to go elsewhere, but by placing myself elsewhere mentally as I was about to go to sleep, circumstances have indeed changed quickly, which compelled me to make the journey. This is a trip. It's not just any trip. We're going on a journey. I have done it across water by placing myself at night on my bed as though I slept where I wanted to be. As the days unfolded, things began to mould themselves in harmony with that assumption and all things that must happen to compel my journey did indeed happen. And I, in spite of myself, must make ready to go toward that place which I assumed I was in when I approached the deep of sleep. As my cloud ascends, thinking of monkey, pixie, cloud, he used to fly on a cloud, he ascended upon a cloud, monkey magic, cloud, sorry, as my cloud ascends and the monkey rides it, I assume that I am now the man I want to be, or that I am already in the place where I want to visit. I sleep in that place now, then life strikes the tabernacle, strikes my environment and resembles my uh, my environment and across seas or over land and resembles it in the likeness of my assumption it has nothing to do with men walking across a physical desert the whole vast world round about you is a desert or a dessert if you like cakes um, from the cradle to the grave you and i walk as though we walk in the desert to be fair i, I like that we have a living tabernacle wherein God dwells and it is covered with a cloud which we can and does ascend when we go to sleep or in a state akin to sleep. Not necessarily in two days. It can ascend in two minutes for some. Why did they give you two days? If I now become the man I want to be, I may become dissatisfied tomorrow or should at least give it a day before I decide to move on. Ah, contemplation sitting in the moment having a moment to ponder thinking the bible says in two days a month or a year whenever you decide to move on with this tabernacle let the cloud ascend as it ascends you start moving where the cloud is or where the cloud was the cloud is simply the garment of your consciousness your assumption where the consciousness is placed you do not have to take the physical body it gravitates there in spite of you the things things happen to compel you to move in the direction where you are consciously dwelling in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so i would have told you i go there to prepare a place for you and if i go and prepare a place for you i will come again and receive you unto myself that where i am there ye may be also john 14 2 to 3 Ellie Hansen, many mansion. Mikasa Sukasa. Show me what you're after. Drop, 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 another one. Drop, drop, drop. Sorry. I'm gonna I'm gonna get off in a bit. We're gonna do this video in two parts, all right? Because it's already been two hours thirty-three. I'm on page thirty-seven of ninety-six. We're gonna go to page forty-five and then I'm gonna say hello, thank you, and I'm gonna get out of here. And we're gonna have a chat with Kev on later tonight to so come back around about ten bells um that's yeah that'll be all right and we'll stay on till about 12 bells gmt um and um and i'm about tomorrow and you'll get the answers you require um, via emails and all will be good but i'm getting a sore throat i don't want to rush i can't do this in uh it took me eight hours to read it the other day i've just realized and i'm not gonna and that was at my leisure in editing so to even if i do it at um, rebel without a pause speed you like that don't you 
I was given that the other day by one at mates. Um, uh, you're no longer a rebel without a pause. I'm like, I know. I'm calming the Gans, the no pff, most high and things. It's uh, it's working well. So we're going to do this video in two parts. This is I've given you a lot already. It's a five day seminar, and you're getting it within five hours. So I hope you're not sad. I hope you're enjoying it. Please, thirty one thumbs up. Wow, you are happy. Um, this is incredible. It's pioneering. I haven't stolen it. I'm looking for the author. There is more information that may highlight him. I've never seen a video with this information in. I've never copied and pasted any of it. And it's about time. It's sort of light at day. And we had a chat about this. All right. So uh, let me just uh, let me just uh, rebel without a pause. Pete, yeah, we've covered all of them spellings before. Pause. Skin pause. Pause. A pause. A pregnant pause. I know them all, JJ. Right, so where did it get to, John? Um, there are many, mans many mansions that are the unnumbered states within your mind, or meant, as we call it, meant. All right, for you are the house of God. In my father's houses are unnumbered concepts of self. Concepts. You could not in eternity exhaust that, um, what you are capable of being. I think it's better with it out. I don't, I can't. It is a serious subject, Dave. Stop taking out false tooth and whistling along. <laughs> if you'd like to know how to make a false tooth very cheap, um, I'll show you a video on that another time. If I sit quietly here and assume that I am elsewhere, I have gone and prepared a place. But if I open my eyes, the by location, not the by shop, the bishop, but the by location, by being two, as you know, which I created vanishes. And I am back here in the physical form that I left behind me as I went to prepare a place. But I prepared the place nevertheless and will in time dwell there physically. Ooh, the halls of Amente is all I can see. You do not have to concern yourself with the ways and the means that will be employed to move you across space into that place where you have gone and mentally prepared it. You don't need a TARDIS, a time and relative dimensions in space machine. No, you do not. Simply sit there quietly, no matter where you are, and mentally actualize it. But I give you warning. Do not treat it lightly. For I am conscious of what it will do to people who treat it lightly. Thank you for the link, Gansdiz. I treated it lightly because once I just wanted to get away. I treated it lightly. I glanced upon this and other such things. And, you know, you, they're not relevant at the time. You've got enough on. It's not what you're looking for. It's a lot of work and you need some help. So I treated it lightly once because I wanted to get away. I just wanted to get away. Based only upon the temperature of the day. It was in the deep of winter in New York, another clue to the author now, as I desired to be in the warm climate of the Indies, that I slept that night as though I slept under palm trees. Next morning when I awoke, it was still very much winter time. I had no intentions of going to the Indies that year, but distressing news came which compelled me to make the journey. It was in the midst of war when ships were being sunk right and left or left and right and center but i sailed out of new york on a ship 48 hours after i received this news it was the only way i could get to barbados not barabbas but barbados with a clue to the author and i all arrived just in time to see my mother and say a three-dimensional goodbye to her in spite of the fact i had no intentions of going the deeper self and watched where the great cloud descended. I, yeah, that's what it says. I placed it in Barbados. And this tabernacle, the body, had to go and make the journey to fulfil the command. Wherever the sole of your foot shall tread, that I have given unto you, wherever the cloud descends in the desert, there you resemble that tabernacle. I sailed from, the, from New York at midnight on a ship without taking thought of submarines or anything else. I had to go. Things happened in a way that I could not have devised. I warn you, I told you it was an old publication. Look how old this is. And ah, it's about time it was aired, isn't it? I'm so excited about the after chat. Um, and later tonight with Kevin, you can put your comments in and tell me what you think. Kevin may or may not know what has happened. I haven't seen his name there calling um, insignia. 
and um, we will see. But I warned you not to treat it lightly. Do not say, I will experiment and put myself in Labrador. That's what it says, in Labrador, just to see if it will work. You will go to your Labrador and then you will wonder why you ever came to this class or why you ever came to this lesson or why you ever joined SBL's Pro or why you scribe to Indy. All right. So it will work if you dare assume the feeling of your wish fulfilled as you go to sleep. Um, where is it? Control your moods as you go to sleep, please. Don't go to mood sleep and don't go to mood in a bad sleep. <laughs> I'm going to leave that there. Control your moods as you sleep. I cannot find any better way to describe this technique than to call it a controlled waking dream. In a dream, you lose control. But try preceding your sleep with a complete controlled waking dream. Enter into it as you do in a dream. For in a dream, you are always very dominant. You always play the part. You are always an actor in a dream and never the audience. Sometimes, I know, but mostly he's right there. He's right. We'll let him have that. When you have controlled waking dream, you are an actor and you enter into the act of the controlled dream. But do not do it lightly. For you must then reenact it physically in a three dimensional world. Now, before we go into our moment of silence, there is something I must make very clear. And it is this effort we discussed, you know, previously. If there is one reason in this whole vast world why people fail. It is because they are unaware of a law known to psychologists today as the law of reverse effort. Now, law seekers, law fans, word porn fans. What did you say, Indy? What, what was that, David? I said the law of reverse effort. That sounds like a law we should all get to know about. When you assume the feeling of your... Now I can hear the keyboards. What? What's that? What did he say? Come on. Well done. <laughs> when you assume the feeling of your wish fulfilled, it is with a minimum of effort. You must control the direction of the movements of your attention. Where, um, where attention goes, energy flows. But you must do it with the least of effort. If there ever is effort in the control and you are compelling it in a certain way, you are not going to get the results. You will get the opposite results, whatever they might be. I wouldn't know. He wouldn't know. You only, you know, you can imagine. That is why we insist on establishing the basis of the Bible as Adam slept. That is the first creative act. And there is no record where he was ever awakened from this profound sleep. What? Yes. Go look. I know. When I read that, I actually went to check. I went, hmm, 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 hmm. We need to chat. From this profound sleep, while he sleeps, his creation stops. You change your future best when you are in control of your thoughts while in a state akin to sleep. For then effort is reduced to its minimum. Your attention seems to completely relax and then you must practice holding your attention within that feeling without using force and without using effort. Force is never the answer. Do not think for a moment that it is willpower that does it. When you release Barabbas and become identified with Jesus, Muhammad, you know, peace be upon him, etc. You do not will yourself to be it. You imagine that you are it. That is all you do. You are Jesus. You are Muhammad. You are, you know, etc. Thoth, Hermes, Horus, Seth. Atom, Aper, you know, whatever. Um, I know they are all relevant, but I just got carried away. Then construct, I'd like to be a bird-headed man. <laughs> Let me again clarify the technique. Know what you want, then construct a single event, an event which implies fulfilment of your wish, restrict to the event to a single act. For instance, if I single out as an event, shaking a man's hand, then that is the only thing I do. I do not shake it. Then light a cigarette and I do a thousand other things. I simply imagine that I am shaking hands and keep the act going over and over and over again. And so the imaginary act has all the feeling of reality. The event must always imply fulfillment of the wish. Always construct an event which you believe you would naturally encounter following the fulfillment of your desire. D and sire. Two words. D is without. Sire 
you know so desire without sire i don't like that word we need to change it that's one thing i was so tempted but we're going to leave it in those of you that have been paying attention you will have and know that and uh, dehumidify declare exactly so desire you are the judge of what event you really want to realize <laughs> i took too much i'm all wet there is another technique um, I gave you previously, if you cannot concentrate on an act, if you cannot uh, snuggle into your chair and believe the chair is elsewhere, just as though elsewhere was here, there, then do this. Reduce the idea, condense it to a single simple phrase like, isn't it wonderful, or thank you, or it's done, or it's finished. There should not be more than three words, something that implies the desire is already realized isn't it wonderful or oh, thank you certainly imply that these are mentalizations mantras also known as yes these are not all the phrases you could use um but make up your but make, make up out of your own vocabulary the phrases which best suit you and your character but make it very very short and you always use a phrase that implies fulfillment of the idea martin sheffield had a board near his front door and it said something like every day i'm getting better every day i'm getting stronger that was his mantra and he'd look at it every time before he went out into the evil realm well not the evil realm the realm of of uh, uncertainty the public and he'd look at it and go hmm and then he'd go out so you know things like that there's a note on your door if you are anxious if you're nervous if you have a disposition then you can strengthen yourself and you can we have a lot to give you the armor of god ephesians we ain't even started all right <laughs> When you have your phrase in mind, lift the cloud. Let the cloud ascend by simply inducing the state that borders on sleep. Who whistles cats, Dom? Whistled the cat. Anyway, simply just came in then, sorry. Simply begin to imagine and feel that you are sleepy. And in this state, assume the feeling of the wish fulfilled. Then repeat the phrase over and over like a lullaby. Whatever the phrase is, let it imply that the assumption is true that it is concrete, that it is already a fact, and you know it. It's happened, and you know it. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Just relax and enter into the feeling of actually being what you want to be. As you do it, you are entering into Jericho, that's right, with your spy, that's right, who has the power to grant it, that's right. You are releasing Barabbas and sentencing Jesus to be upside down cross and all that crucified and resurrected all these stories you are reenacting if you now begin to let go and enter into the feeling of actually being what you want to be now we're going to have a moment of silence i'm going to give you a chance to think here i'm going to say hello and we're going to uh i'm going to uh stop whistling ganders <laughs> For the pooches out there. And uh, here, boy. Walkies. It's walkies. Are we going walkies? I don't know why I'm doing like I'm in a field <laughs> across to Sweden. It's the kettle. Back when I was a little nipper, my grandma's kettle was a gas boiling aluminium um, whistling machine right so we're gonna have a moment of silence right you because we're fresh in the moment and we're coming up to closing down and i need to eat and we're coming back in about two hours i'd like you all just to sit there let's think of something right we're going to do it together <laughs> down boy yes burn <laughs> yes yep come by i'd like you to uh somebody whoever is first on the screen what place are we going to give us a place let's make it it's interactive i've done enough gabbing Thank you for being patient, interactive, chatting, and monitoring the room. Let's play a game then. Where are we going to? Angkor. Boom. Eric, yes. We're going to the temple of Angkor. What? Now we've got, does everybody know? Right. If you don't know what the temple of Angkor what is, I believe Eric's actually been there. And he sent me some photos in an email of uh, unbelievable. So, if you don't know what the Temple of Angkor Wat is, go and get an image of it, please, from somewhere other than Google. Duk Duk Go is somewhere that I like to find things on, just, to, you know, for your considerations. 
I know Eric knows when it's inside out. So there's been some good coverage of Angkor Wat on um, on, a, on an Indian man's channel. Um, oh, what's he called now? Praveen Moham. Too late, Gansders. You've been beaten, but I poll in Finland would have been great. We're going to a warm place of Angkor Wat, the temple. Right, you've got the image. If you haven't, um, pause it, go get it and come back. We're carrying on. <laughs> um, you can't pause it, it's live. I know. Let's just close. Think of that. Or, you know, if you can't think of Angkor Wat because you've never been there, perhaps make it easy with somewhere where you've been. A great holiday that you had with fam. Um, something of a good memory that you won't have any trouble, that you know off by heart, grandparents and things like that. Holidays with. But if you can, we're going to go to, for those that can, Angkor Wat. A minute. Let's go there and just be silent. I don't know if that was a minute or not, but I'm not going to be here all night. Um, I got told off for not wearing a mask. I went into a place that I wasn't allowed to go. I was taking photos and I was leaning over and he didn't like me. And all kinds of things happened there. I went then you know, through a side door because it said do not enter. And I tried it and it opened. So I went through and I ended up in um, in uh, Mallorca with my grandma and granddad. Um, instantly with, um, I won't ruin the moment i'll keep it private for me but uh, my grandma took me on holiday my grandmother a lot when i was little with my granddad and um, i went to many places zagreb yugoslavia but uh, i just went to a place there then so um, you need a quiet room you need a dark place you need to practice on this mentalization and um, you need to do it in silence you need to be comfortable you can't have any outside noises if you've got live next to a road you know when you're above a shop and things like that find another location that isn't next to the road buses traffic cars and um, shop noise and everything like that um, and that's about it really that is that is your shallots i'm going to quickly get onto tube where are we wait page 40 of 96 silence period for david in future to come back and start part two i've learned not to save him. That's um, yeah, page 40 of 96. Wait there. Let me just, out of curiosity, how many words did I just say in that time? I don't know if it will tell me. And then I'm going to have a look at the, uh, the chat room. We're going to say good night. It's 8 p.m. Wow, it's flown on me. Uh, what would you call them? Memory phone bean bags. <laughs> We might see you later with Kevin, I'll see. He did say he'd have a chat. We'll see. We'll come and say hello, my big lad. Give him a chance to... Uh, it's been a while. Or maybe tomorrow. I've just read 16,661. 16,600. Oh, that's a bit weird, isn't it? Number-wise. One, triple six, one. I didn't know it's not me. I just took a pause on that page. I didn't know it was going to be 1661. One, triple six, one. There we go. Save. Yes, we're going to save that. Then we're going to go and say hello to Tube. Thank you very much. And then I will join these two videos together. I will download them. I will leave this video as it is. I will leave part two as it is. I will create a playlist. 
and you can watch and look at the comments or if you're feeling big and hard and you like the, this kind of stuff then you can watch it all in one go <laughs> if you are mentally strong i realize sometimes we overload we need time to reflect let it sink in when this document gets put i'm looking for the author if you can help me find this author that would be most beneficial all right i've just got a word document called new document and when i opened it checking it i went what a lot of work in here i don't recall reading this i don't know where it's from i don't remember downloading it i don't remember copying it i don't remember maybe i'd swapped it with somebody and i gave somebody some info and they gave me some you know at meetings and that that we've done who knows but uh, the author i'd love to know who be who it be this is where you select to mute david does the vatican own thy soul to close it down no not a prayer Psh, did that on purpose you know, there are other subjects you can get interested in tartaria flat earth and um, holographics and um, end of the world scenarios um things that are on tv and the media streaming sites that you needn't get to uh, you know waylaid with we're nearly at the end all right of everything not at the end of the world but at the end of our journey is uh this channel um spls pro and um what 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 we need to do we've nearly accomplished just about everything as i said we're not uh, there yet home and dry but it won't be long eric jerry brent claire and jesus burn mr dav peter born again cleef cv Cortland, bless hey new scribes everywhere i will make you blue once you've been here for a bit, you will be blue and equality is paramount. All are equal in the eyes of Indy and we will uh, we will enjoy having you in the, the clan and the fam. So thank you, um, Gansders. I'm looking, I'm liking them icons very much, very, very much. You've got the special ones. Forgot to shout out to the channel supporters. Thank you for supporting. All helps and uh, will be used as, uh, you know, best be used. Let me go to top chat indie but i do just put it into the spl's trust it all goes into the same place and builds up um for um I hope, uh, that's clear right um bud presser new one channel supporters dom dow there you are dom i see you there you didn't see out the earlier yeah baby all right i will be on tube see you later jerry yeah we'll go back we'll have a little uh chat later and uh martin fair play Shh. nice one thank you loads more to go um <clears throat> i hope you enjoyed that the 34 thumbs up is probably one of the most i've ever had so if you haven't uh thumbs up or down let's see if there's any downs god have me resident no oh, wow okay then thank you all bless up it's time for food i to give your mum a kiss and a hug um mums we love you and we uh we need to sort this out quickly one last thing um off topic but with mums the, the word woman has been redefined there's a lady that's got annoyed with the uh, oxford styles and the definitions and implied meaning and if you look and search the you'll find a story that i'm going to cover later on a separate video that i haven't seen anywhere i haven't taken this from anybody i'm aware that the implied meaning and definition of woman um oxford has been changed have a look on uh, on duck duck me ducks um it is a moment for women to be powerful and say at last because what it was changed from and what it was changed to is unbelievable you wouldn't adam and eve it literally you won't adam and eve and what, what in this 2021 the, the 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 definition of woman has been changed the uh, not all dictionaries because you know how many they are and what types there are but generally women mother's day boom shanker go and check what it was oxford i think it was oxford definitely oxford it's happening in italy as well and then the italian prime minister hey ciao bello it's nice having mediterranean blood and connections this is where it's come from italian prime minister has bigged up the um i think it's an english lady ruby or something that's that's promoting the um the the the, the uh 
strengthening of the image of women to be fair you know they're not sins of the flesh they um, without them there would be no no humanity so um yeah as you know we love you um and we need you um, more so than we express as men and we're idiots sometimes and um you know we uh, we get in there and uh, the the remarkable news um you know is because you need some positivity on the like g g policemen killing and murdering and uh, ministers breaking rules and bullying and uh, furnishing their friends with embezzlement of contracts we'll leave to one side what i need to say is some positivity some love some light that's what this story was about i want you because a lot of us go to sleep worrying money bills rent can't sleep furlough have i got ima enough masks for the bus tomorrow oh am i going to get in the shop have i got an all yeah, everything that you worry about we're on it all right so we're going to change it and we're going to involve women more motherly love did i just see there claire yes i mental states uh megan harry opera oprah um you know uh, oh i felt suicidal perhaps she did but you have quite a lot of resources there to help you out love some of my family don't have anything and if we're all family and family look after one another family are to be protected yeah family you mess with hey you mess with my family yeah, he messes with my family. What is it now? He said, what's that line? Oh, no. Oh, failure. Epic fail. But you get the intent. The intent was there. It conveyed the message. You mess with me. You mess with my whole family. Yes. All right. No violence needed. But we've got a big fam. And we're looking after one another. So, uh, yes, yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed it. We'll see you later. Long ago I finished. Mums, women. Boom. It's happening. Excellent things happening. High court rulings. Yeah, man. Motherly love and divine femininity. So needed. Yes, it is. And we're sorting it in our own way. In our own, you know, others are too. We're not the onlys. But uh, I just want to say, big up, bless up. Fam, don't mess with the fam here. <laughs> don't mess with my man. Don't mess with my man. Stop it. Enough singing. See you later. Much love. Ciao, bello. Stay mellow. It's a lion, I promise you. And on this one, the dirty one's gone. <laughs> Much love. Bless up.